Nebraska football has long been known for its punishing rushing game. By imposing their will on the ground, the Huskers became one of the most dominating programs in the history of college football. The bruising style was developed by head coach Bob Devaney, who captured two national championships. Tom Osborne continued the tradition with three national titles. But now there's a new sheriff in town, Bill Callahan, fresh from the NFL, who brings the high-flying West Coast offense to Lincoln. Can he win over a fan base that's never seen an offense like this? We'll find out next. For a record-setting 264th consecutive time in a streak that spans more than 40 years, here in Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium packed to absolute capacity as we wait today's matchup. We've got a good one here. The Golden Eagles of Southern Miss challenging the Huskers of Nebraska. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Gary Jarrett along with Ray Bentley, and it is great to be along with 75,000 raucous Big Red fans on a very busy day of college football activity here on ABC. This particular commemorative coin that I'm holding in my hand is a very special one because in the long storied career of Nebraska football it is now indeed a new era because Bill Callahan has come to town. A replica of this coin being used in all the coin tossing activities for home games this year. Callahan comes back to the collegiate ranks. He brings the West Coast offense with him and Ray a lot of people think the perception is that all you do is pass the football. That's not necessarily no, the case. No, not necessarily the case and, but when you hear West Coast offense you think the, foot, the air is going to be filled with foot Football, throw, throw, throw. But Callahan told us the essence of the West Coast offense is balance between the run and the pass. And that balance was perfect in the first quarter last week in the route of Western Illinois. And the balancing act was led by sophomore quarterback Joe Daly in his first start and junior tight end Matt Harrion. Daly hit Harrion seven times in the game for a game high 98 yards, including these two touchdowns. Daly accounted for a school record six touchdowns in the game, but he also threw four interceptions. It was only his first start, and that's why when you have a guy like Matt Harrion around, it's going to make him look good. Harrion's so special, he can make us look good at quarterback. <laughs> so you've got this new varied attack coming from Nebraska, but how about Southern Miss defense? This is a defense that has led all major colleges. They've given up the fewest number of touchdowns over the last five years. They've only got four returning starters from last season, but one of them is an All-American linebacker. His name is Michael Boley. You're a former NFL linebacker. What makes Boley so special? Well, the thing about Boley is he's a football player. He's got the great instincts. He takes excellent angles to the football. And when he gets there, he will blow you up. He has great speed all over the field. And he will be all over the field. They'll line him up in a lot of different places. So Nebraska is going to have to make sure they know where Michael Boley is. So Southern Miss opens their season with a stout defense. Nebraska has the new look on offense. It could be a classic matchup. We're going to check back in our New York studios. John Saunders, Craig James, Aaron Taylor are standing by. Nebraska and Southern Miss, we are acutely aware, of course, of the events that stunned our nation three years ago today. At the Strategic Air Command Museum, just outside of Lincoln, over 3,000 American flags salute the victims of 9-11 at those terrorist sites in New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. And here at Memorial Stadium, just a few minutes ago, during the playing of the national anthem, 75,000 paid tribute to the victims and the harsh memories of September 11, 2001 that are forever etched in our minds. There was a special salute of the fans, a sobering reminder of just how our world was turned upside down three years ago. It conjures up thoughts of, of my days in Oakland uh, when that did occur, of the tremendous pride and passion of the people of the United States and, and what they went through and how we endured that and uh, what this country represents uh, for us, that we can never take anything lightly or take anything for granted. It is a season opener for the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. It's game number two of the 2004 campaign for the Cornhuskers. The freshman, Brett Barefoot. He is not barefoot, but he is wearing a shoe. will handle the kicking chores for the Golden Eagles. In the deep spots, David Horn and Tierre Green. Back at the goal line for Nebraska. Beautiful day for football. Temperature 73 degrees at kickoff time. High anticipated in the mid 80s. Green takes it midway in the end zone. Decides to run it out. Green across the 10. Bumped down at about the 17-18 yard line. 
Well, the quarterback, as you heard Ray talk about, Joe Daly for Nebraska. Last year completed 64% of his passes as a backup, had great numbers in the opening victory over Western Illinois last week. He will be at the control of this West Coast offense under new head coach Bill Callahan in this new era here at Nebraska. And he came out almost perfect in the first quarter in the opener last week against Southern Illinois. So from the 18, first and 10, Nebraska ready to go to work. You'll see a lot of motion, a lot of misdeception here, and they try to confuse that defense. Corey Ross on the handoff, bounces back across the 20, gets across the 25-yard line before he is knocked down. Let's check out the backs and receivers for the Big Red of Nebraska. You saw Ross carrying there. Freewald, the fullback. The receivers, Bilkington, Nunn, and Matt Harry, and a great tight end pro prospect. Eight yards in that last pickup. Here's the interior line. The big beef up front trying to pave the way for the ground game, which in the past, of course, has been the great tradition of Nebraska football, but it's a much more balanced attack now. Only one setback behind Daly. Again, he's moving two men on the right side, looks back over his shoulder, and now gets ready for the snap from Mann. Fakes the pitch. Throws out here. There's Harry in the tight end, short of the 30-yard line, and We'll take a look at the defense now that's been so impressive in recent years for Jeff Bauer's Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. Three-man front, Chad Ruffin, a veteran there amongst that trio. Terrence Ford, Akeem Lockett, the linebackers, Barner, you heard about Michael Bowley. Antoine Cash will get a lot of calls, I would imagine, today. And the defensive backfield, largely untested. John Eubanks will be hearing him on special teams as a return man as we get a look at Bowley. Matt Bowley made that last tackle on Matt Herrien, and I expect Bowley will follow Herrien around quite a bit today. Also, Antoine Cash will draw Herrien in coverage. After the pickup, it's third and one. First down easily. Corey Ross gets across the 35-yard line. Some nice interior blocking up front, opening up a pretty good-sized hole for Ross, who's not the biggest guy around. He is only 5'6", 190 pounds. Oh, but he gets behind some big guys right over here. And Matt Harrion, who says he's not a good blocker, cleared the way for Ross to get the first down. Yeah, Harrion tells us that blocking is probably the weakest aspect of his game. Yeah, and that's how good he is. Two carries for Ross, 16 yards already on this first possession for Nebraska. Working through the middle once again, and this time gets it across the 40. Travis Coley making the tackle for Southern Mississippi. Last week in the first half, Ray, Nebraska so impressive against an uh, arguably inferior opponent, but they just moved the ball almost at will. Yeah, and they use a lot of different people to do it, and, and that's the essence, I guess, of the West Coast offense, the, the balance and the flexibility and the, and the ability to use all of your guys out there. Looking to throw out of the pocket, dumps it out, it's Ross. Ross with blockers, cuts back, gets close to midfield before he's knocked off his feet. Dylan Tucker, the linebacker for Southern Miss, making the tackle. Just a screen pass. You're going to see the lineman over on this side release and get out here and try to lead the way for Corey Ross. They check, and then they'll release on the screen. Good timing on the screen. That's the key to a screen pass is to time it out. And Ross, great balance there. You see him get the hand down to keep himself alive. First down, just short of midfield now for Joe Daly. The man in motion is Tierre Green. Straight drop back, looks right over the middle. This one is incomplete. Terrence Nunn was the intended receiver, but boy, there was good coverage. He was smothered right there by the uh, Southern Miss defense. Prior to the snap, offense, false start, five yard penalty, remains first down. Dan Bloom is our referee for this one today. And that's one of the problems with all the shifting that you'll see from the Nebraska offense, the shifting and then the motions. It's so important to get everybody lined up right and then go at the right time. And, and that's something I was impressed with the way they handled it last week. Coach Callahan's team was very smooth in this new offense with all the movements that they do. Yeah, they didn't really stutter until into the second half of that ball game, but by that time they'd racked up more than a 40-point lead. That cluster on the bottom, big bootleg. 
formation. Rolls it out. Harry in the tight end trying to keep his balance at the 45 46 yard line. John Eubanks coming up to knock him off his pins. They'll move Harry in, in, in to a lot of different places in order to try and get him the football. That's the second time we've seen the bootleg with Harry in so far. Harry and comes from a little town in Nebraska. Pierce, Nebraska said the population is only about 1,700. Said he knows most of them, too. <laughs> he knows most of those folks. Second down and 13. From their own 46 yard line. Daly with plenty of time finds his man. It's Harry and again moving into Southern Miss territory at about the 43 yard line. Boy, for a guy that had only caught, what, 20-some balls in his career in Nebraska, Matt Harrigan is just loving what's going on here in the first game last week and the first minutes of today's contest. Right, he's already got three grabs today, and he caught seven, which led the, the Huskers last week. And I'll tell you, when you have a guy as talented as Matt Harrigan, Bill Callahan, it features him in this offense. He is their best number one top receiver. Coach says this kid has an opportunity to impact every game. On the slant, the catch is made. Getting inside the 35, Ross Pilkington. He makes tough plays. He's one of the captains this year for the Cornhuskers. Pilkington is described as steady by the offensive coordinator Jay Norville. He's going to be coming in from this side on the slant route, and it's perfect timing by Daly. And when he gets back there and hits that back foot on a three-step drop and is able to let it go right then, he's very accurate. He gets in trouble when he has to move the feet. Lots of motion here as Pilkington and Nunn both move to the left side. Now countering back as the fullback to the near side. And the handoff goes to Ross. Not much to work with this time. Tried to spin, but boy, he's wrapped up very easily. Middle linebacker Fleckler was there, and he had plenty of help. And the Nebraska fans getting on that defense just a little bit for some extra push and shove trying to take him down. Well, that's how Antoine Cash and all the, the Golden Eagles play their defense. They, they hit hard, they run to the ball, and they finish plays. And the crowd was a little upset the way Cash finished that play. Even the referee gave him a little push at the end. Get off of him. But Cash is a, is a solid football player. Uh, one of the returning, one of the four returning starters for Southern Miss. Antoine Cash, he's not bashful. He says, I think I'm one of the most under-recognized players on this lineup out here. He may be right. Little dump pass out to Ross. Eludes one man, but tripped up at the 35-yard line. Good coverage there. Antoine Cash once again making the tackle on the other side of the field. But I'll tell you, Corey Ross is, is very slippery out there. He's got incredible balance. And he's he's five foot six and he's down to 190 pounds. You know, last year he was well into the 200s. In fact, peaked at 220 pounds and lost the weight to give it a, a his best shot. He said he wasn't sure that, that you know everyone told him he had to be bigger in order to play at this level. Well, he's back down to that 190 where he was in high school, and he is grease lightning. Nebraska two for two and third down conversions. They need big yards on this one, however, to keep that streak intact. Daly going to keep the football. He won't get the first down as he gets down close to the 30, and he may have lost the ball down there for just a fleeting moment. There was a sudden bit of urgency in the scramble. It is Nebraska football. But a fourth down situation coming up now for Bill Callahan's club. You know, when we spoke with the, the Golden Eagles defensive coordinator, Tyrone Nix, he said, we have to win on first down. That puts us in good situations in third down. And in that particular series of downs, they did very well on first down, and it put Nebraska in a tough situation. But it looks like they're going to go for this. It would be about a 48-yard field goal attempt if they were to attempt it, but that is not the case. So on fourth down, with the ball at the 30 and needing to get down to the 23, they're going to go for it. And here's Matt Harry, and he starts out up here. He may move. Actually, they're going to second guess and, and take, take a timeout. Take a timeout. Well, we'll break away from Memorial Stadium here. This first drive for the Cornhuskers now sputtering. We'll see how it plays out right after these messages. On the opening drive. 
drive. This will be the 12th play coming up. Ball to 30, but it's fourth and seven for Nebraska. They had to take the time out there, Ray. Right. You see Jay Norvell up in the in the booth. He's the offensive coordinator. He communicates with Coach Callahan as to what to expect. Coach Callahan makes the call, and then Joe Daly has 360 plays <laughs> on this wristband that they've tied to his belt, and he was a little confused on the number of the play, and he had to take a timeout. That Rolodex there, he was spinning madly, but he did, couldn't come up with it. Fourth and seven under pressure. Ball knocked loose. Ball picked off. The defense of Southern Mississippi. Terrence Ford lumbering down the sidelines and it bumped out at roughly the 31-yard line. The big defensive tackle after the ball was knocked loose, grabbing it and moving it, and Nebraska is denied on their first possession. Huge play by the Golden Eagle defense to stop that drive on a fourth and seven. And Matt Harry in the tight end was wide open in the middle of the field, but Daly just didn't have the time to get him as the pressure came from Matt Chatelaine. See Chatelaine up top here, just a speed rush on the outside, and then Ford was in the right place at the right time. Ball ends up being spotted at the 33 after a 31-yard interception return. And Ford looked like an Edsel there. Corrington, the motion man, the quarterback, Allman, hands it off to his inside back. That's Anthony Harris. I mentioned Dustin Allman. He is a 6'2", redshirt junior out of Orange Park, Florida. What a transformation he underwent last year. You see the numbers in the first six games and the completion percentage. Look what he did in the last seven games of the year at 54% with 13 touchdown passes. Yeah, he really came on, and the, the turning point was his performance against Nebraska last year. He was just 4 of 24 in that game. He throws, but he skips it. Bounced it on the turf. Deron Lawrence... Marvin Young among the returners. Let's check the rest of the lineup here offensively now for Southern Miss. Mentioned Young, Currington, tight end Graves. Hardy is the fullback. On the offensive line, the man to keep an eye on is that right tackle, Jeremy Parquet. Fourth year as a starter, 337 pounds. He's got NFL written all over him. Yeah, he stands six foot seven. That's a large man. Listen to this crowd. Here comes a blitz. They're showing the blitz. Allman may be a little bit rattled. Now gets it on the shotgun. Here comes the blitzing attack. He throws, completes his pass. Very close to a first down. Oh, nice job on the run with that throw. And Deron Lawrence pulled it in. And that's the comfort zone for Dustin Allman. When he is on the run, he is extremely accurate with his passing. Usually you have a guy who likes to stand there and throw the ball. Allman's more comfortable when he's running around. And he shows you that right here, going to his right. But he's equally as good going to his left. That's his game. Boy, he's waited a long time for another opportunity against Nebraska. We'll talk about that in a moment as they're ready for this play. Alma with a straight back drop, dumps it out here. Harris eludes a tackler, gets inside the 20. We'll check out the Nebraska defense. The defensive starters, the black shirts, a long, proud tradition here at Nebraska. And these are the men up front. Your linebacking core. Barrett Rude, right in the middle. Probably hear his name called a lot today, and what a great family tradition. The Bullock Twins, among the defensive backs, McPherson and Washington complete the four back there. The Allman changing the play at the line. At the 19, at the 18-yard line. Harris, a lot of red out there, no place to go, thrown for a loss back at the 22-yard line. Lakeven Smith was leading the Nebraska defensive surge. Dustin Allman did a nice job at least of getting them out of a bad play because Nebraska blitzed the corner on the backside. McPherson came on the blitz and he checked that play to run away from it. Now Nebraska still stopped it, but that just gives you a little example of the growth that Dustin Allman has gone through. He's a seasoned quarterback in there. Last year in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, when Nebraska dominated Southern Miss, Allman was four for 24. I mean, he had a nightmarish ball game. Pass is overthrown out here on the sidelines. So now Nebraska fans raising a big ruckus here because it looks like they're in a position to 
There's a defensive off. coordinator, Kevin Cosgrove, and he was bringing the horses on, on that last play. They blitzed both corners. Washington and McPherson came off the ends, and that rattled Allman enough that he threw it up high. Darren McCaleb with a field goal attempt. 39-yarder on away, and it is good. And so, Southern Mississippi, after getting the turnover on the interception, capitalizing with the first points of the afternoon. People might be surprised that Southern Miss comes out with an early lead here, but Bill Callahan told us that they are a physical football team and that Southern Miss is better than you think. And I think they, they've shown that here early in the ball game. Well, that was impressive after the big fellow Terrence Ford lumbered down the field for 30 yards on the pass interception, and they turned it into the 39-yard field goal from Darren McCaleb and a 3-0 ball game now. Tierra Green at the one-yard line for Nebraska. He's got great quickness if he can find the hole, and he squirts across the 25, gets near the 30-yard line on the return. Let's take a look now at the Pontiac High Performance Drive Summary. The interception set it up, and the final result, seven plays, only 11 yards over two and a half minutes, and the resulting 39-yard field goal from McCaleb. First and 10, Nebraska tries it again. They moved the ball efficiently on that first possession prior to the pickoff, but they were in fourth down mode. None the motion man. Daly hands it inside, and Ross looking for some running room and not much to work with there. May have gained a yard, and that was a tough yard. Matthew Chatelaine, sophomore defensive end at the bottom of that pile. And Chatelaine has come in here and made a couple of plays. He had the hit on Daly that forced that interception on the previous possession, and now he makes a play here. A redshirt freshman, a walk-on, which you're going to hear a lot of walk-on references for the Southern Miss football team. That's a huge part of Coach Bauer's program. Chatelaine missed all of last season, sat it out. Daly stays right in the pocket, throws a bullet, and another pass picked off. John Eubanks with the second pick. And how about this defense of the Golden Eagles? We mentioned that they've been the toughest team to score on over the last five years in major college football, and now we're getting a good indication of why. Here's a, what we call a crossfire. This linebacker's gonna come here, the other one's gonna come behind him and cross, and that's the pressure that Daly had to deal with as he's getting back to throw, but he just makes a mistake because the protection was sound, outstanding. He just made a bad throw. More than a murmur of concern here among the Cornhusker faithful, the Big Red fans, many of them coming to their feet now to try to inspire the defense. They've got their work certainly cut out. Inside handoff, Harris to about the 24-yard line. And right now, this is vintage Southern Miss football. They play good defense. They force the takeaways with that defense, and then they try to control things on the ground with their offense, control the tempo of the game and eat up the clock and, and just basically take care of the physical nature of the game with the line up front, which is the strength of this football team. Fake handoff this time. Allman keeps it. And the defense is there responding to the challenge. Adam Carricker making the tackle. Here we talk about Southern Mississippi and their defense over the last uh, few years since 99. Fewest defensive touchdowns allowed. And the closest being Miami with 13 more scores given up. Yeah, Tyro Nix has done an excellent job putting in that pro-style defense for the Golden Eagles. Three-man rush. Allman throws out here but misses the intended target, Marvin Young. Trey, you talk about that pro-style defense. In a sense, you've got the pro-style West Coast offense, and you've got kind of a West Coast feel. I don't know if that's the correct terminology, but a pro-style defense. Kind of right. intriguing. I, I call it the Gulf Coast defense. And, and, and <laughs> I like it, that. They are, you know, these, these guys, except for the fact that they're not getting paid, this could be a pro football game, at least in terms of the schemes we see with the Nebraska offense and the Southern Miss defense. 
from 41 yards. Boy, right down the middle. Darren McCaleb with his second field goal and two drives off of two turnovers by Nebraska. And the Golden Eagles are on top by six. Well, a surprising start here is Southern Miss. A two-touchdown underdog has a 6-0 lead on a pair of McCaleb field goals. And now, barefoot getting ready to kick off. You have to give the Nebraska defense a little credit on the sudden change situations. They've just given up field goals. Last week they had eight sudden changes. They only gave up one field goal. Tough kick to handle, but it takes a good bounce to Tierre Green. Across the 30 this time. Pretty good run backs each time by Tierre Green using his quickness to get out across the 30 yard line. You know, I said that Gulf Coast defense is what I've coined uh, the, the phrase to call the Golden Eagle defense led by that man, Tyrone Nix. And it's fronts and movement. They got a lot of different looks they'll give you, and then they move people all over the place. They have different personnel groups. They'll bring in nickel. They'll bring in dime. They script the calls sometimes, which is almost unheard of in defenses, and then attack mode. That's the key. They come after you. You'll see a lot of different looks and blitzes. Ross. Oh, the ball is loose. Waiting. I did not hear a whistle before, but the play now, of course, is dead. Yeah, it looks like they've got it spotted prior to the fumble. Looked like Jake Anderson coming up off the football, number 71, the right guard. And you see Nebraska goes to the run, trying to settle that quarterback, Joe Daly, down. You see the ball comes out late. It's hard, it's hard to see right here. Good hit by Bowley, the linebacker steps up in there. Boy, he loves to hit. He's explosive. Daly under pressure, eludes that pressure, comes back to the near side, and out of bounds, and boy. That might have been late. In there fact, is it a was. late flag. Michael Bowley coming across the field that time, but now it looks like they'll pay the price. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that you just can't do. You see Coach Bauer pretty upset about it. Well, you talk about attacking and being aggressive, and but there is a fine line. Yes, a very <laughs> fine line, but it is a line. Yeah. Play for personal foul, a late hit out of bounds. Defense, 15 yard. First down. Daly's got nowhere to throw the football. Excellent coverage downfield by Southern Miss. So now he's just in survival mode, trying to get out of bounds and make the best of it that he can. And Bowley comes in, and that's that's real close. You talk about a fine line. Well, he initiated that contact right on the sidelines. Just a little something for Daly to think about. Now Bowley runs hard to the point of contact. He's not going to slow down. Tierra Green is the deep back now. And the pitch goes to him. He gets his first opportunity across the 50. Turns on the Jets across the 30 and out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Bowley on the opposite side of the field finally was able to knock him down. But how about Tierra Green? He's a redshirt freshman from Omaha. And uh, last week against Western Illinois, seven carries for over 110 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Got 24 on that one. You see the big left tackle there, Mike Erickson. He's the guy who pulls. Pilkington comes down with a crack block, and that clears the way for Green. And good blocking down the field by none up here as he cleared the way downfield for green first down opportunity of course the ball at the 28 yard line in southern miss territory nebraska trailing 6-0 if you're just joining us ross who hit and hit hard by daryl bennett in a head-on collision there just as he came across the 25 there's some popping going on down there. Yeah, it didn't seem to bother old pork chop nope. too much. And that's that's the nickname that Corey Ross got here when he came as a freshman. And it really evolved from a story. He was at a, another player's house and they cooked up some some smothered pork chops, which sounds good right about now. Oh, yeah. But uh, that player came back and told the coaches that pork chop had had seven or eight pork chops. He really only had one, but it was on <laughs> at that point and he became pork chop. Right now he's looking like a tenderloin, though. That's right. He's about 30 pounds lighter than he was in that freshman year when he was 220. Now at 190. Yep. None in motion. Here's Ross again. Pork chop spins away from one man, gets in across the 20, 
Good running effort there before he's knocked down by Travis Coley. Well, Monday night, it's the regular season premiere of Monday Night Football as Brett Favre and the Packers will battle Jake DeHome and the Panthers. Nine Eastern, six Pacific. Monday Night Football right here on ABC Sports Championship Television. Well, Nebraska stung with those two turnovers resulting in the pair of Southern Miss field goals, but the Huskers responding and now with their deepest penetration thus far of this first quarter. And they're doing it on the ground. You see Nebraska, a huge advantage in total yards, but the turnovers have hurt them. Daly with time to throw. Ball is tipped. It was intended for Pilkington. John Eubanks was the defender and got his hands on it. Yeah, Eubanks very well could have picked that one off. And right now, Joe Daly is not very sharp in there. Well, quite a contrast to last week against the 1AA opponent in Western Illinois. And Nebraska just feasted in the first half. Yeah, well, he's, he's facing a different animal this week in, in the form of the Golden Eagle defense, which, you know, is, is one of the top NCAA defenses for the last several years. Six for nine, 29 yards, a pair of interceptions. You see the numbers for Daly. Second down. Throws out here. Nice catches made by Ross. Close to the 13-yard line. Travis Coley over there, along with some help from some teammates, wrestling him down. Ross was excited about the, the West Coast offense and the, the fact that the backs are used as receivers quite often. In fact, he played wide receiver as a junior in high school, moved to running back as a senior. But he, he said, in fact, all the backs can catch, and they were all excited that they were going to become part of that passing game. Yeah, you asked him about that yesterday, and boy, did his eyes light oh, yeah. up. He said, I love being a receiver. His eyes were lit up the whole time we talked to him. He's an exciting guy. Third down. Got a whistle here as the play starts to unfold. Another false start on Nebraska. Down to the final seconds here of this first quarter. Right to the snap. Offense, false start. Number 11, five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Dan Bloom, our official today, wearing a little patch, as are all the officials on their uniforms. A tribute to the memory of 52-year-old Newman Ramsey, who passed away unexpectedly and was a member of the Conference USA officiating crews for quite some time, and so he is being remembered on this day. 77,887 on hand here as we end the first quarter and Southern Miss is on top 6-0. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Here's the forecast and live radar from the Super Doppler 7 Storm Team. Along with Ray Bentley, we'll be hearing from Vince Welch, who is down on the field patrolling the sidelines. I'm Gary Gerald. National championships have become rather commonplace for Nebraska. Four listed here when this was first built, and a fifth has been added since, the most recent coming in 1997. Yeah, now they, it's the West to, Coast offense. They need to update that uh, plaque <laughs> they got on the front of that thing. From the 17-yard line, it is third down. Drawing for the end zone. Oh, almost picked off and then almost caught. Travis Coley had his hands on it. That's still a dangerous pass by Daly down the middle. I don't think he saw Coley back there. And he just kind of threw it up for grabs again. So he rolls out a little bit to the right. But I mean, Coley's standing right there. That very well should have been another interception. And Joe Daly is very unsettled right now at quarterback. 35-yard field goal attempt for Sandro DeAngelis coming up. A senior out of Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. And it kind of wobbles its way through there. It good, was good. Yeah. It's three points on the board, and the Husker fans take a collective sigh of relief. That wasn't exactly artistic in terms of appearance, but you still get three on the board. Yeah, it was almost blocked. He actually kicked it underneath the rusher. It was a, a nice miss is what they call that. 
Nebraska has to do something to settle down Joe Daly in the passing game right now because he is not seeing the whole field. In fact, when we spoke with Bill Callahan, uh, he said that's the biggest thing that you see with a, a college quarterback where they can only see half the field or a portion of the field. And he said, well, he's used to the quarterbacks in the NFL that see the whole field, and that's what they're trying to develop in Joe Daly. Well, we talk about the national championships. How about the Nebraska tradition? Just look at some of the numbers, including 42 straight winning regular seasons, which is the best in the NCAA. We mentioned the sellouts at the top of the show, 264 straight, and today nearly 78,000 packed into this facility. And it's a predominantly red. What do you say here? Red and white? It's, uh, that just about takes in 78,000 people. Yeah, don't adjust your set. <laughs> there are no other colors available in this part of Nebraska on game day. A sea of red. Got a 6-3 ball game. All field goals thus far. Sandro DeAngelis getting ready to kick off now. Got a couple of great special team returners for Southern Miss. Jasper Falk, number 21, is joined by John Eubanks. Eubanks picked off that pass earlier. Eubanks standing at the goal line. Falk is out at about the 10-yard line, and here's the kick. Eubanks backpedaling, and they'll bring it out to the 20. Nice kick there by the man who got the field goal just moments ago. Coming up in part two of ABC's college football triple header today. Most of you are going to be seeing Colorado take on Washington State. Then tonight at 8 Eastern, Colorado State battles number one, USC, plus other regional action. Check local listings for the games in your area. And a reminder that ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Now this is the deepest field position that Southern Mississippi has had with the football today. Let's see what they can generate here. Boy, listen to this crowd. Yeah, Omen trying to make the... He's got to take a timeout. Right, he had to get him out of a play based on what he saw, and the, the crowd definitely helped the Huskers here with that one. So we'll break away from the action here. The fans at Nebraska making it tough on the opposition, but the opposition leads by three. on the run incomplete and we'll check in with John Saunders and the crew in our New York studios with the Taco Bell update Fresno State against Kansas State Dwayne Wright is having a heck of a day takes this one in from two yards out he had a four yard touchdown run as well and Fresno State leads in Manhattan 14 to 7. Fresno State's Bulldogs getting off to a hot start in this one. How about that? Second down, quick throw, and it slips through the hands of the intended receiver. Antoine Currington was over there on the left side of the field, couldn't hang on to that one. And neither quarterback has been particularly accurate or, or impressive here yet today. And there's Rip Shearer, the offensive coordinator for Southern Miss. He was a head coach, what, six years at uh, Memphis, now in his second season with the Golden Eagles. Right, that's where he developed his relationship with Jeff Bauer, and when he was out of a job for a, a year in 02, he visited Bauer's practice and they kind of talked, and the next year he hired as the coordinator. Allen has time to throw. This one's on target. Got his man. Nicely done. After the 45-yard line, Currington hanging on to that one that time. Boy, what a difference when you can take that drop and you've got plenty of time. Nobody in your face to get the pass off. And Currington is the playmaker for Southern Miss, and they love to put him right down the pipe. And you see Allman, perfect with that throw, gets it right there in front of Bullocks. 26-yard gain, moves it out to the 46-yard line. First down. Again, out of the shotgun. Here's the option toss. 
Bouncing his way down to the 40 is Anthony Harris. Not flashy, they say, a hard worker, runs hard. Daniel Bullock's coming up to make the tackle. It's a nice read by Dustin Allman, just a lead option, and he, he sees he's got to make the pitch, and then good blocking by the receivers on the perimeter. It opened it up for Harris. And the backup quarterback, Damian Carter, is now on the field after that 14-yard gain. So you got to keep an eye on him. They use him as a wide receiver, and he is slotted out to the left side at the moment in Nebraska territory. Quick pass goes out to Carter. Carter steps to the outside, picks up maybe a tough five yards to about the 35 before Barrett Rude makes the tackle. And that's that little bubble screen again, and they just want to find a way to get the ball to Damian Carter. Even though he is the backup quarterback, they have a package where they try and get him on the field as a receiver and let him get the ball in his hands because, as you can see, he can make moves. He's an explosive football player. Now look at that 14 for 17 as a quarterback in a couple of games last year. Second down and five. Oh, we got movement on the right side of the line. Looked like the tight end, Otto Graves, may have taken a step. Yeah, Graves got a little, uh, little antsy there and went early. Coaches were telling us that he's probably the most improved offensive player out of the spring camp. Offense, false start, number 19, five-yard penalty, remains second down. No. Tight ends do not see a lot of action in terms of the passing game in the Southern Miss offense. And Rip Shearer, the offensive coordinator, told us he's trying to work them in more, but they have not been on the receiving end of a pass yet here today. Joe Carter back in now to give them another wide receiver. They split two men to each side, only one setback behind the quarterback, Allman. Here come that blitz. Oh, and that blitz put enough pressure that the ball was lofted out too high for the intended receiver, Anthony Harris, to get his hands on it. And yeah, Nebraska's bringing the farm here. You see the safety and the linebacker are going to creep up, and they're going to make that blitz early. And even though it's a screen pass, they have to go. You know, Allman has to throw it quicker than he wants to, and he just is just off with the throw, and it's an incomplete pass. So third down. Here to come again. Oh, jailbreak. Throws and it's off the fingertips of Antoine Currington. So it'll be a fourth down scenario now. And Almond picks himself up off the turf. Yeah, he got hit pretty good at the end of that one. As that time they brought a lot of people from up top, a couple of safeties coming in out of the nickel package. And Allman told us he, he wants to throw behind the blitz, which is exactly what he did. But with the pressure bearing down on him, he threw a little too high for Corrington. So we're looking at our first punting scenario of this afternoon here in Lincoln. Luke Johnson gets it off. And it hits at the one yard line. Oh, they came awful close to keeping it in play, but it will be a touchback and they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. So we're what, two minutes or so into the second quarter. We've had three field goals and Southern Miss hangs on to that three point advantage. Six three. Check out our Pacific Life game summary right after this play. Nebraska going to work from their own 20 yard line trailing by a field goal. Daly has none in motion. Tierre Green picks his way out close to the five yard, the 25 yard line. Hakeem Lockett and Chad Ruffin coming up to make the tackle. As for that Pacific Life game summary. See the yardage is here, right? Daly, 7 for 11, 35 yards, but the big number is the two interceptions. Right, and you see this 106 yards for Nebraska so far, 66 on the ground and just 35 through the air right now and a couple of interceptions from Joe Daly. And the West Coast offense is, is featuring the run right now because Daly has, has been a little inaccurate. Southern Miss with only four defensive starters back from last year's squad. Making a good, strong showing, putting some pressure on Daly. He eludes two men. 
not known as a runner, running for his life, got a little extra push by Cash just as he went out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Well, he, he came here as an option quarterback, so he has a little running in his repertoire. But we were talking to Barrett Rude, the linebacker, the other day, and he said he, he's been teasing daily that he doesn't have the running skills that he used to have as a, an option guy. But he looked pretty good right there, tucking it under and, and moving the chains, getting the first down for the Huskers. Hey, he slipped two would-be tacklers along the way. That's pretty good. Not too shabby, but there was nowhere to throw the football down the field on that one as Southern Miss defensive backfield, which was a question mark coming in, is playing very well. First and ten now for Nebraska. This time it's Ross in motion. Daly looking off to the left. Now comes back to the right, and the ball is tipped, knocked away. Seth Cumbay, who has the corner, coming up that time, and boy, he had his hands on a football, and had he been able to hang on to that, he would have been dancing his way for six points. Yeah, he would. Another mistake by Joe Daly. He's going to Wait for the things to clear on the left side. Not there. So he rolls back to the right. Just going to throw the outlet here. And that's another questionable decision by Joe Daly. Daly has missed five of his last six passes. Two of those being intercepted. Now second and ten. Pierre Green. Maybe a couple of yards. Not much work on that time. We'll bring it up to third down and about eight. Well, it's time now for this week's Aflac trivia question. Who are the five coaches to lead a team to the Super Bowl and then return to the college ranks as a head coach? Pretty interesting list. Yeah, you want me to look that up out. quick a minute for you? Or? Well, we were talking about this earlier, and even though we haven't had a chance to hear from our sideline guy, Vince Wells, he was all oh, over yeah. this earlier. I was really dazzled by his uh, his knowledge. Claimed he pulled it right off the top of his head. I don't know. Oh, a little shovel pass. Very dangerous there. Eubanks came up with it, but it hit the ground. It'll be ruled an incompleted pass. John Saunders and the crew are standing by in our New York studios. A very busy day of college football. Always busy, guys. Illinois facing UCLA. John Butcher goes 16 yards here. But Franklin came after he's flushed out of the pocket to strike in the end zone. And right now, a 14-7 lead for UCLA. For the first time, Nebraska now in a punting situation, John. And we take a look here at this boot. Marvin Young, dangerous return man, calls for the fair catch. Oh, he had some room to work, too, and yet he went for the fair catch. I think he's, little, he's beating himself up. We've been talking about Vince. Vince, let's check in and see what's up down here on the sideline. Guys, you've been talking a lot about the quarterback situation already and how Dustin Allman's trying to bounce back from last year's performance and the miscues of Joe Daly already. Coaches on both sidelines very familiar with the responsibilities of the quarterback. Both were quarterbacks in their day, uh, beginning with... Uh, Jeff Bauer, uh, you see him there with the number seven jersey on. He was the quarterback for three years at Southern Miss. And, of course, now he's the head coach. He was the team captain and MVP as a senior with the Golden Eagles back in 1975. One of the best quarterbacks in that program's history. And then in the late 70s, Bill Callahan also stepped under center as a two-time honorable mention All-America for Illinois Benedictine. Got out of there in 1978. We talked about that with both coaches this weekend. And they understand firsthand the responsibilities of the quarterback position, and we're seeing some uh, interesting play from that spot here so far today. Absolutely. We've got an injured player for Nebraska. We believe it's uh, one of the cornerbacks, Larnell McPherson, who is down, being helped to his feet now, and uh, he'll walk off under his own power across the way. Had a 42-yard punt. First one of the afternoon here by Nebraska. You know, back to what Vince was talking about, we told Coach Callahan that we had some pictures of him at, back in his <laughs> glory days, and he said, no, 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 don't go there. <laughs> well, sorry, Bill, we had yeah, to. had to go there. Wasn't any doubt about that. Still looks like he could throw the ball around the yard a little bit. Sharon Moore for the first time, a walk-on last year for Southern Miss. His first carry, Barrett Rood coming up to make the tackle. Barrett Rood is a solid, in fact, I think he's an outstanding linebacker. He's kind of the brains of the front seven. He makes all the calls. He's the captain. 
of the defense and in a very solid tackler. Here's Moore once again to the 30 yard line this time. And Root answered the, the bell. We started talking about him and he showed you the solid tackling ability that he has. And he comes from a long line of Roods playing football here at Nebraska. His brother Bo is a freshman on the team, a backup linebacker. His father Tom was a captain back in the early 70s. His great grandfather Clarence also a captain. And then Bob Martin, an uncle, a captain. So the only guy that didn't get the captain was Uncle John. <laughs> Third down, short yardage. Golden Eagles need a couple, and Nebraska indicating there may be movement on the left side of the line. Ricardo Clark, number 75, may have been the guilty party. Don't want to pick on Ricardo. We'll find out here. False start, offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Sorry, Ricardo. He was guilty. And... Southern Miss is actually running with their second offensive line right now. And you see Dustin Allman a little frustrated about that miscue. But that's what the Rip Shearer told us they would do at some point, put the second line in just to rest the first guys and also develop depth. Out of the shotgun on third down and under pressure. Tripped up and dropped. Wally Mohammed, a junior coming through to make the tackle. And it'll be punt the football time for Southern Miss. That was just a missed blitz pickup right there. Eight yard loss. Right over there you see number 30 in the backfield, Sharon Moore. He had that responsibility and the rusher got inside of him. And Wally Muhammad put the pressure on hard. Kellen Houston awaits the kick. At the 35 and immediately thrown down. Terrific coverage there by Caleb Hendricks. Well, it's still a 6-3 all field goal ball game. And we got just over nine minutes to play in our second quarter in Lincoln. Well, this will be the best starting field position on a drive for Nebraska. The first four drives. They average starting from the 24-yard line. This one will go from the 36 after a 47-yard punt and a return of only a yard. They scored two touchdowns out of this formation last week. Tier Green. Boy, this young man is impressive here as he gets out to the 45-yard line. Well, we posed our Aflac trivia question a short time ago. We were talking about the five coaches leading a team to the Super Bowl and then coming back to the college ranks as head coach. Of course, Bill Callahan is on that list. As for the others, now well, let's take a look here. Bobby Ross, Bill Walsh, Forrest Gregg, and George Allen. Allen going to Long Beach State, Gregg to SMU, Walsh to Stanford, and Bobby Ross to Army. And our guy Vince Welch was all over Oh, that. he knew every one of them, didn't he? I was so impressed. <laughs> Ross across midfield. He looks crisp. It's interesting to see now, Ray, of whether or not Joe Daly can kind of get back into a, a nice rhythm that he showed in the first couple of drives there, and they moved the ball effectively before he had those two interceptions. Yeah, you know what I think he needs to do is throw the long ball. Take a shot down the field, because right now the, they've thrown just short and intermediate passes, and you see the Golden Eagles are just jamming the line of scrimmage with defenders. It's Ross with room to work. To the 34, maybe the 33-yard line. Ross is just amazing. And as a former linebacker, I can tell you, when you have a back who's five foot six and quick like Ross is, he's hard to see coming through these holes. You're going to see him. He's going to come out this way. There's going to be a big hole right here. And watch him just scoot through it. It looks like he's going to get hit over the top. Nice hole, nice blocking right here. But all of a sudden, he pops out the other end and he's actually ducked under one of his own guys. But he is a weapon for this Nebraska offense right now. Nebraska has rolled up 111 yards on the ground, but not much happening this time. Matthew Chatelaine making a tackle at the 35-yard line. Coming in, the Southern Miss defense, which lost seven starters from the outstanding group they had last year, had some question marks as far as, you know, were they going to be the same kind of group that they were last year? And so far, the question is, yes, they are the same kind of group. None the slot man to the near side, but it's a handoff, and it's Ross. 
penalty marker is down as he is dropped and another flag comes flying in here from the deep backfield. Kevis Coley with the tackle. It's the area of holding. Now, how would you know that? Well, they always <laughs> used to do it to me constantly. Holding, offense, number 69, 10, you want decline, penalty decline. Be third down. Nick Pavendo, the 300 pound senior from Keller, Texas, with the call. It was declined. At the conclusion, of course, of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. So third down and 10 from just inside the 35 yard line. And this is not where the Nebraska offense wants to be in a third and long. Daly lost it out here. Ross makes a nice grab, but he's only going to get a couple of yards out of the deal. Maybe to the 32. Seth Gumby coming up off the corner with the tackle. It's great pursuit by the Southern Miss defense to rally to that screen. And, that, and that's the key to covering a, a screen is the recognition and then get bodies over there. And they had plenty. The biggest concern of Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator for Southern Miss, he said coming into this game was how his kids would respond, adapting the difference in pace from practice to a game situation, keeping in mind that this is the season opener for Southern Miss. I'd say they responded pretty doggone good. Yeah, they've adapted very nicely. You haven't seen any confusion from them or, or anybody running wide open from Nebraska. Daly with a pump fake. He throws it out here long for the corner of the end zone and overthrows his intended receiver by several yards. Terrence Nunn was streaking down there. Well, that's the shot that I, I thought they should take, and, I, and it may help them in the long run, but on a, on a fourth and seven, I think Daly just figured, let's, let's throw one up and see if something can happen on a little double move. You saw the pump fake, but it's just outstanding coverage down the sideline. Eubanks didn't let Nunn out of his sight at all. So the Golden Eagles come back to work behind their quarterback, Dustin Allman. Now Dustin had a nightmarish game against Nebraska last year. Harris working his way up the field across close to the 45 yard line. Good play call there for Southern Miss as they ran right at a stunt. The defensive end for Nebraska came crashing down and Harris went right off of that. Watch this defensive end. He's going to come crashing inside and that makes the block easy for the tight end right there. And that opens things up and uh, Root got caught inside. Harris with a nice move to break it out. 13 yard pickup. Quick strike and a little bit too hard and out of the hands of Antoine Corrington. I'm not sure if that pass wasn't in intended for Marvin Young and it looked like Corrington reached out and batted it down. See Coach Bauer not real happy with the way the offense is, is executing thus far. At least in the passing game they've been able to run it a little bit. Couple of tight ends now in Otho Graves and Patrick Corbett. Pass comes out here to Young and Young hammered at the 45. We talked about that nightmare for Dustin Ullman last year against Nebraska. We asked him what he learned in that loss. I thought you could get by on, on ability, but you know you can't get by just on athletic ability. You got to know what you're doing, and I think I took a lot of that, you know, for granted. And and to, after that game, I mean, it was just slap in the face. You know, and, and it was a, a big slap in the face. I mean, anything that could have went wrong, went wrong. Yeah, it was, it was a tough day. You see the numbers from a year ago. Yeah, and, and Coach Bauer said that might have been the best thing to happen to Dustin Allman. It, it was a wake-up call, and he rededicated himself and put a lot more of himself into his job. Out of the shotgun. Allman with time. Throws down the middle. Got his man, Currington, at the 35-yard line. First down and into Nebraska territory. Dustin Allman, whose dad, Mike, played in the NFL for the Buffalo Bills and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Currington right here, he's just going to run inside. He's going to get jostled by a, a defender right there, but he's strong enough to keep fighting through it, finishes his route, and catches it in front of the safeties. A two-deep look from Nebraska, which is unusual for them. They're more of a man team now. Harris inside the 30 that time, sweeping to the left side. Fabian Washington coming up to put the stop on him. 
I mean, you can just kind of feel the rhythm right now from the Southern Miss offense. They're mixing some passing in. They're they're getting breaking guys open in the running game, and they're they're moving the ball very smartly down the field. And nice big nine-yard gain on first down and second and one. You can do just about anything you want. The offense will dictate, and that down in distance. From the 27. Straight ahead, bulldozing his way is Wayne Hardy. I believe that's the first time he's carried the football today. The starting fullback, the sophomore out of Monticello, Mississippi. He's had one start last year and puts it down to the 21-yard line. Coach Cosgrove, defensive coordinator, actually came and joined this Nebraska team from Wisconsin last year. And Southern Miss looked at a lot of Wisconsin film to see what they could get out of it. Harris tripped up. Behind the line of scrimmage, like even Smith. And to finish that story, they, they've seen a lot more blitzes. And, and that's, I think, Coach Cosgrove, he's got some athletes here that that's what they're good at. The Bullocks at, at the safeties are, are excellent blitzers. And Barrett Root is a, a nice blitzer from the from the middle. And then Stuart Bradley, another linebacker, they like to bring him. They brought corners. He, he's really brought a lot of blitzes, a lot of different looks and pressures. But right now, Southern Miss has been able to control it. 14 years of Wisconsin, Kevin Cosgrove. Almond to this left, looking out here long, and uh, that one way overthrown. Marvin Young was down there in the corner. That's had a, no chance on right, that Right, I think that's a good decision by Dustin Almond. He saw that Young broke that route off a little quickly. Here he is up top, and he, he didn't finish it all the way to the corner, and that's, I think, due to some of the contact. I don't think Young expected to get the football, and Almond, with the pressure on him, made a wise decision to just throw it away. Well, just inside the 24, it is third down. 13 to go for the first down. And again, this big red crowd trying to inspire the defense. They know this is a big play. They like Currington in these situations. Down the middle, they find him. And boy, he's pulled down at about the six yard line and that quiets this crowd in a hurry. Nice strike that time by Dustin Ullman to Antoine Currington. And Currington's been the, pretty much the guy who's making all the catches, and rightly so. He's the most talented receiver that they have. He's a big guy. He's fast, and he's strong. He knows how to use his body to create room for the quarterback to throw it in there. You saw him use that forearm a little bit to jostle the defender and create the space. And again, that was a third and 13 scenario. Option toss. Harris, oh man, was he nailed. Grixby coming up and just took him right off his feet. Courtney Grixby, the freshman with the tackle. The game between these two teams last year, as we do have a flag on, on the play, I think we'll get the call here. Chop block, offense, number 55, 15-yard penalty, remains first down. Travis Cooley. Redshirt freshman at the guard position on the O line called for the chop block, and that is a costly one. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. That's the 15 yarder, and and that moves Southern Miss back into a whole different page on their playbook. But when they get down inside the 10, is what I was going to talk about prior to the penalty. They love to run the option down in that area of the field, and were successful last year. Scored a touchdown on it in the game against Nebraska. So it's at the 21 yard line now. First and goal. Wall of red there, sealing off the hope for progress by Anthony Harris. Courtney Grixby once again leading that charge. And Barrett Rood was also in there at that middle linebacker spot. He just finds a way. Here he is right here. He's going to sift his way through this and then end up making the hit at the end near the sideline. Stays parallel, inside out on the ball, finds it, fights off the block, and then gets in on the hit. Boy, he did a great job of fighting off that block. So from the 19-yard line, second down and goal. Almond changing up again. Brinkton and Young to the left side. Almond with a handoff that comes inside. Harris inside the 10, going to be ridden out of bounds at about the seven or eight yard line. Daniel Bullock's coming across. A uh, great cut there by Harris. Saw with, that the blitz came, and the blitzers actually overran the play. They're coming up expecting pass. They both shoot upfield, and that creates the lane right here. And Harris, with the vision, is able to see that, make that cut back, and get good yardage. 
And as he made that cut, Ray, it was interesting. He, he didn't oversell it. I mean, it wasn't like a pell-mell charge. He just took a good look, then made the move, and made it pay off. And they say that Harris is kind of a reflection of the team. He's a hard worker. He's not flashy, but he's a solid football player. Almond throws. Young has it. Five-yard line is all he can get, possibly to the four. It may be field goal time once again for Darren McCaleb, who's already delivered a pair of three-pointers earlier this afternoon. This is a, a double screen right here. You're going to see the line work out here. They fake the screen over here, but they're setting up a, a receiver screen back here. He's going to come back here and make the catch. Double screen, but Nebraska stayed true to their discipline on defense and stopped it. 21-yard attempt. McCaleb looking to go three for three on the day, and he has done just that. So an impressive drive down the field results in not a touchdown, but another field goal, and Southern Miss is back up by six. Well, it's been all field goals thus far. 9-3 is our score. Ray, how surprised are you that the vaunted West Coast offense that we talked so much about for Callahan hasn't produced a touchdown thus far? You know, it's amazing because they looked so good last week against Western Illinois, but I think the Southern Miss defense has had a lot to do with that lack of touchdown Absolutely. thus far. Well, McCaleb has been perfect on his three field goal attempts. He has nine points on the board, and Southern Miss enjoying the six-point lead with under two minutes to play in this first half of action. David Horn, Tierra Green waiting for the kick. High and short from the 15 yard line. Oh, Green's got a hole, but it's closed off at the 35 yard line. It looked for a moment like he might be able to squirt free, but Kevis Coley was there and said, uh uh. Well, I mentioned that Nebraska offense, how good they were last week against Western Illinois. Look, look at the difference here. 42 points they put up in the first half, 398 yards, and right now they're 250 yards shy of what they were able to do last week. So they're definitely not getting it done. And I think, again, the large part and the reason for that is the Southern Miss defense. Daly, and it's Ross. And Ross has got a little room to work. That's close to the 45 yard line. Boy, he's quick. I think Bowley had him in the hole and couldn't make the play. Coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, John Craig and former Notre Dame All-American Aaron Taylor with highlights and analysis, plus former USC wideout Mike Williams opening up about his plight with the NCAA. Should be a very interesting conversation. Matt Harry in the tight end into the 45-yard line. And it's just enough to move the sticks. And Harry, and again, the biggest weapon, and that's the guy that Daly has gone for. But all those catches by Daly, I believe, he, or by Harry, and he has four now, have been for five yards or less. Daly with less than a minute to work. Mulkey working the right side, but again, not able to really free up and gain significant yardage, but he gets out of bounds, and that stops the clock with 51 seconds to play in the second quarter. Yeah, that was the key by Mulkey there, able to break the tackle, and that, that way he stops the clock. So it's a heads-up play by the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. At the 49-yard line in Southern Miss territory, daily out of the shotgun, being chased. Has to throw it away. That's a good decision by Joe Daly. And watching the game last week, he got in trouble in that kind of situation because he tried to force the ball in. And this time he makes the good decision to throw it away, live to fight another down. Our man Bowley was among those who was providing some pressure. Michael Bowley will do that. And they love, like I said earlier, to move him all over the place, put him in different spots, and let him get after the quarterback. And he does a nice job of doing that. And you see the third down conversions thus far. And you, you convert third downs on first down, in my opinion. You get a good, put yourself in a good situation. And that hasn't happened much today. There's the pressure again. And Daly wrapped up. 
He may have gained a yard, and that's about it. Well, we just said Bowley was going to come after him, and he did again. Well, the first two possessions, Nebraska was able to convert on third down, and that's five possessions now where it has not happened. This makes it fourth down here. They, they're trying to run the, the punt team out, and the offense thinks, hey, we're, we're still going to go. We're going to make a play. And Daly, Daly take takes the time out. out. You're right. Well, 19 seconds to play, a 9-3 lead. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Nebraska's punter, Sam Cook, is on the field standing at his own 38-yard line awaiting the snap. There is no return man back for Southern Miss. Well, they're not going to take any chances of, of muffing the, the return, and they're just going to let it bounce, and wherever it ends up, they're going to take their six-point lead into halftime. Oh, and it takes a great bounce. Can they get it? Uh, it was close to the goal line. No, it was inside across the plane, and it will be brought out to the 20. Well, I, I thought that was a pretty good play there. Uh, Courtney Grigsby dove and knocked it back in, and I, I think he made that play. Of course, well, I'm way up great, here, but. He made a great effort. That's a great play. I, I think uh, the fellas down there in the striped shirts might have missed that one. Well, he had a good look. He's right there on the goal line. He's watching that plane, and uh, they say bring it out to the 20. So with only seven seconds now left in a surprisingly low-scoring first half, Nebraska, after generating the big numbers last week, 56 points, only three on the board, and Southern Miss is going to be very happy to go to the locker room with that lead. Well, we'll be going to our studios after this break. ABC's sports presentation of college football returning after a message from our ABC stations. Well, back here in Lincoln, a low-scoring 9-3 ball game. Southern Miss, a two-touchdown underdog on top by six. And uh, certainly, we talked about, Ray, the defense from Southern Miss and their effectiveness in recent seasons. Are you at all surprised that they've been able to be this successful? Not really, because they, they have a good system and a good program for defense with Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator, does a great job. They put a lot of pressure on early, and the turnovers have really, I think, it took the wind out of the Nebraska sales early, and they have not been able to cover yet from those miscues and that's really what's put uh, Southern Miss in this position right now and of course just a few minutes ago Vince uh, Welch down on the sidelines in our Pacific Life game summary we'll take a look at some of the numbers here he had an opportunity to catch coach Bill Callahan and I think you get a sense of maybe the frustration in his voice as he had this conversation two one coach uh, the high-powered offense didn't put much on the board in the first half what did you talk about in the locker room well we didn't put the points on the board but we turned it over and that was one of the keys coming in and uh, obviously you know you don't want to turn the ball over but we had some key turnovers but our defense responded well Vince I thought we did well in the sudden change we only gave up six points off that sudden change and right now it's a one possession game and we're ready for the second half good luck coach. okay thank you well, it'll be Nebraska kicking off, and Southern Miss Golden Eagles will get their first opportunity. Jasper Falk, Larry Thomas are the return men this time. Thomas standing in the end zone, a little indecision, and then goes down to an E, and they'll bring it out, of course, to the 20-yard line. So we're underway with third quarter play, and Nebraska, after putting that big-time hurt on Western Illinois to kick off their season last week, 56-17, held to just one field goal. They moved the ball a couple of times, Ray, but they had those interceptions, and they turned out to be huge. Yeah, and I think Joe Daly has to step up his performance when Nebraska gets the ball back, but to the Southern Miss offense, the last time they had the football, that was their best drive of the day. It looked like they settled down a little bit on that offensive side, and they've been able to move it. See if Allman can keep it going here as he hands off to Harris, and Harris gets maybe three or so out to about the 23-24 yard line. Daniel Bullock's coming up along with Chad Seavers to make the tackle. You know, Harris is a, a good story. Last year he started the season as the fullback and played the first six games as the fullback, and then they, they were three and three at the time. They had a bye week, and Coach Bauer opened it up to competition at every position. He said we had spring ball in the middle of the year, <laughs> and Harris came out of that as the starter, and he's really solidified himself as their number one runner. Oh, tripped up this time for a loss. 
Penetration by Stewart Bradley. Strong side linebacker. Well, Coach Cosgrove is bringing the heat again. He, he blitzes linebackers and safeties. You're going to see Stewart show up over here. He's coming in from that right side along with a safety, and they're just not able to pick it up. There he is right there, and he goes underneath the block and makes the shoestring tackle. That's a nice blitz by Stewart Bradley. And I remember in the first half, you said in this situation they like to go to Currington. Let's see what happens here out of the shotgun with third down and nine needed. He dumps it out here and at the feet of Anthony Harris, who is his secondary receiver. And so Nebraska fans rejoice in the fact that the defense held and held emphatically. Well, these fans are looking for something to get excited about because Nebraska, other than the defense, which has played well on the offense, they just haven't been able to do a whole lot. Dylan Houston is the designated punt return man today. Kate Pittman had muffed a couple of attempts last week. Part of the turnover problems that Nebraska had despite their lopsided victory over Western Illinois. And he awaits the kick at his own 40. Good distance. Boy, he boomed that baby back to the 26 with a fair catch. Was called for and taken by Houston. Well, a nice boot that time, a better than 50 yards from Luke Johnson, who spent five weeks in Africa over the summer. Said he lost 18 pounds on a church mission over there. He yeah. is a junior from uh, Mississippi, and he, he nailed a dandy there, 53 yards. He was in Burkina Faso, which is a West African country, and he was there, as you said, on a, on a church mission, and the food wasn't quite what he was used to. <laughs> They have barbecue there in that part of Africa or I'm, not? I'm thinking not. Well, let's see what Nebraska can do. Daly to Ross. And Ross squirts free across the 40. Changes direction across midfield. Ross rambling to the 30 and down at the 21-yard line. Caleb Hendricks finally dragged him down. But here's Corey Ross looking for another 100-yard game. Well, Corey Ross is a special player, and you saw it on that. He broke the Michael Boley tackle attempt right at the start on this the little cutback right here. On the right, you see Boley comes in and misses him down low, and now it's Ross in open field, and he's something to watch when he gets out there. Well, that's the first big play. 52 yards. He had 65 on the ground in the first half. Give him 117 right now and a nine-yard average. Now Tierra Green is the deep back behind Daly. From the 21-yard line, the pitch goes to Green. Oh, he gets a block. Slides inside, still on his feet, down to the 13-yard line. Travis Coley comes up to make the tackle. But Nebraska showing like maybe message was received from right. Coach Callahan. It was Dusty Kaiser who made that block. That's a, an earlier play with Matt Herring. But on that last play, that, that little uh, simple toss, Kaiser led the way, the fullback. And he, he just blew up the perimeter of the defense, and that allowed Green to make the cut. Looking then split wide to the left. The handoff goes inside. Ross trying to free himself up, but Michael Boley had something to say about that. Stopped him well short of the 10. You know, back to Corey Ross, we were talking uh, to him yesterday, and he said, I asked him if there's any inspiration that he has. He said, yeah, he's playing for his brothers. He has a brother, Roger, who is 24 years old, played for a couple years at Kansas State and didn't really get a chance to shine. So Corey said, I'm playing for him. And then his other brother, Stewart, he's playing for him as well. His brother, Stewart, works in a bakery, takes the bus to work every day, doesn't have a driver's license. And he said that his heart is with those two guys. And that's what he's out here trying to get done. Three tight ends in the alignment. Now Daly hands to Ross. Ross changing direction, and he gets the first down, I believe, at the 10-yard line. Ross told us he was a big Barry Sanders fan growing up, and he looks a little Barry-ish out there today. Last year, he was the number three rusher for Nebraska, nearly 600 yards in the season. Off to a terrific start as he had big numbers last week in the victory over Western Illinois. 125 yards, and he's approaching that number in this one today. But a first down now for Nebraska. Play action fake right over the middle. Touchdown, Cornhuskers! Grant Mulkey. 
A sophomore from Arlington, Texas has the score. We are tied at nine at a conversion that may put Nebraska on top for the first time of the afternoon. Boy, and Joe Daly was jumping up and down after making that play. Mulkey's going to win by getting inside on the coverage man. Right there, he cuts inside. That's a cardinal sin on defense down in this area of the field. you got to funnel that man outside, make him go around you. Daryl Bennett was the man who got burned there defensively. The kick is good. So Nebraska is on top for the first time. And what a drive on their first possession to start second half play. Get a look at number 84, Grant Mulkey on the bench as he got the touchdown pass from Daly after a terrific 52-yard sprint by Corey Ross to set up the touchdown. Five plays, 73 yards, and Nebraska leading for the first time. Thomas from the seven-yard line for Southern Miss. Thomas still grinding ahead as he gets close to the 30-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with our colleague Vince Welch. Well, that Nebraska touchdown was set up by a solid three and out from the Nebraska defense. Now, although red and white is the dominant combination here at Memorial Stadium, the Nebraska defense is known as the black shirts. Barrett Rude's practice jersey here, the outstanding linebacker, three-time owner of the black shirt. All the way back to 1964 when the coaching staff broke up the offense and the defense, said the defense would wear black practice jerseys. They didn't know it was going to be a tradition, but it has stuck around, and now Barrett Rude says it's a bad of honor to have a black shirt. Pass working on the sideline for Southern Miss intended for Deron Lawrence incomplete. Barrett Root also says that that, uh, that black shirt is probably his favorite piece of memorabilia as well as being a badge of honor. And rightly so, and there's a great tradition. He said the biggest thing about the black shirt to him was just don't let down the guys that were there before you. And only the starters get to wear those black shirts in practice and then a few other guys that'll contribute get the honor of wearing those shirts. Oh, ball knocked away and out of bounds. It was a pitch to Damian Carter, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Anthony Harris. It was just a bad pitch by Almond, who had a little pressure on him. He was getting hit. See him running the option to the right, and he really didn't get hit. He was worried about getting hit, and that's the thing you can't do running the option as a quarterback. You got to take your licks. You got to stand in there and be blind to what's about to run you over. And that time Almond pulled up a little short, and it affected his pitch. At the 23 yard line, third down. They need a bunch on this one. 16 yards necessary for the first down. They were three and out in the first series to start the third quarter. Almond with time. Over through the receiver. We had no play. Apparently there was a penalty marker on the far side. Maybe a motion call here. Prior to the snap, offense. Number 66, false start, five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Returning starter, Chris White. Left tackle position. Getting a little uh, antsy there and jumping the gun a bit. Chris White is another one of those walk-ons that has had success in the Southern Miss program. Right now he's a 292 pounder. He came in as a freshman weighing 210 pounds. So they, they wow. put him at the training table and let him get to work. <laughs> His name should be Pork Chop. Yeah. <laughs> well, this crowd is really making it tough. Southern Miss right now. Almond has time. Now he fires and it's picked off at the 43 yard line. Daniel Bullocks. Well, I'd say Nebraska has responded to whatever Callahan and the coaches had to say at halftime, and this crowd is now responding en masse. Well, it's third and forever, so Nebraska went to a zone defense, and it's really like a cover four. You're going to have a deep half there, or the deep quarter there, deep quarter here, and deep quarter here. And right here is the man that makes the interception, and Dustin Allman does not see the safety. You see everybody getting their depth, and then it's just a great break to the outside and a heck of a defensive play. So they'll start this series at the 28, 13 yards on the interception return by the Bullock. And Daniel Bullock's had an interception in a similar situation last week. Oh, 
Ross, not much happening this time. And interceptions, that, that's something that they've become accustomed to here with the Huskers. Look at it, 32 interceptions led to NCAA, a school record, 47 takeaways. They had five of them last week, and they come up with one right there, a huge play by Daniel Bullock, his second pick of the season. Starting defensive backs total 30 of those interceptions now. They've been very productive in that sense. Daily now. Under pressure as he throws long. Boy, and he got nailed that time. The pressure coming from Hakeem Lockett. Well, he was going for Matt Harrion the whole way, and Harrion was, was double covered down at the bottom. Cash was underneath him, and then over the top was the corner Eubanks. Here, I take that back. It was Hendricks, Caleb Hendricks, the other corner, the right corner, and so they had him bracketed, and there was no way they were going to let Harrion make a play on that one. Nebraska with a one-point lead. Ten and a half minutes to go here in our third quarter. Daly all kinds of time. He finds his man. What a hit, but he held on. Mulkey, who scored the touchdown, he paid a heavy price at the 15-yard line. He got popped big time by Daryl Bennett. And Bennett gave up the touchdown earlier, and that was payback time. Wow. But I he held you, on to it. Yeah, that's the key. Mulkey showed you his courage and his grit right there by hanging on to the football and taking the medicine. But this is a huge hit. Let's see if we can take a listen to it on the replay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my. Trainers Derek Clark and Doke Ostergaard checking on the well-being right now of Grant Mulkey. Well, you're going to have some cobwebs. Yeah, that, that's one that'll shake you right down to your roots. And that's what you're supposed to do as a safety. They'll come across and, and make them pay for catching the ball over the middle. And it's just amazing to me that Mulkey held on to that football taking a shot like that. Well, he's up. He hears it from the Husker fans. He probably has a little air back into his lungs so he can get up and move around. You know, but in spite of the big hit on the defense, that Nebraska offense is on the move again. They're at the 13-yard line, and they now have another first down. They scored in their first possession of this second half to take their first lead. Fake handoff to Tierra Green. Oh, he's wide, open. wide open. Touchdown, tight end Matt Arian. He was wide open. Finally, Matt Harry and shakes loose down the field, and the reason was the way they set this play up with the motion that made it look like the crack toss they've been running earlier. They make that fake motion over there, and, that, and they forget about Harry, and they're thinking run, and he just slides behind everybody. Point after attempt from Sandro DeAngelis is good. The reaction from quarterback Daly. Two possessions, two scores, Nebraska 17 to 9. Vince Welch on the sidelines, Ray Bentley alongside in the booth. I'm Gary Gerald. Great to have you with us here for college football, kicking off a triple header on ABC today. Nebraska now with a 17 to 9 lead kicking. Thomas takes it deep in the end zone and goes down to a knee. And let's go back to that last touchdown. Well, you see the motion coming in here, and that's when they've run this toss crack where they come over here and they're going to fake the run, and everyone's going to forget about Matt Harry and right here. See how he slides back? Look how open that is back in that corner. A blown assignment by the Southern Miss defense. The first time we've seen that, at least obviously, in today's ballgame. And what a shift of momentum we have seen in the first five minutes of this second half. Southern Miss enjoyed the lead at halftime, but now they're down by eight. Let's see if they can get on track. Their last two possessions have produced virtually nothing. Little misdirection. Oh, and trying to free up, and he, uh, Anthony Harris, didn't have an awful lot to work with that time. Stuart Bradley with good penetration from the linebacker spot. Joe Daly has definitely turned things around here in the second half. He has looked very good in the two Husker touchdown drives. Well, you heard Bill Callahan telling Vince as they came out of the tunnel to start third quarter. 
just can't have those turnovers, but he said it's a one possession game. And within five minutes, he's now comfortably, well, I don't know if, he, if you're ever comfortable as a coach, but no, you're on top. But it's a one possession game, but he's ahead now. Yeah. Pass is completed. Making the catch that time to Ron Lawrence. Now starting Monday, the benefactor will be handing over a million dollars, just looking for the player who has what it takes to step up and take it. Who will pass his test for success. That's the benefactor premiering Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on ABC. And it's always nice to have a benefactor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for one myself. Look at the yardage here in this half. Only a 98-yard differential. Little pitch goes out on the side. Harris kind of stumbling his way along. Fabian Washington with the tackle. Had it across the 30. That's going to be I, I close to think the first, the first down. down. Yeah, It'll be the first first one in the second half here for Southern Miss trying to get something going on offense. But I, I got to think that Bill Callahan made some real nice adjustments at halftime to get his offense sparked and, and moving and get Matt Herrian involved and get things going for the Huskers. Young and Carrington wide to the right side. Looking to the left firing to the sidelines may have been out of bounds. Well it's incomplete anyhow. But Ron Lawrence doing a good job to fight off the defender there and make a play on that ball. And Lawrence ran the old hitch and go, and it was great coverage out there by Grigsby. See the hitch right there and then the go? And Grigsby stayed right with him. That's excellent play by the defensive secondary. He is also an interesting story because he's got a knee injury and he's he's wearing a brace and trying to play through the discomfort. Right, Deron Lawrence actually has a torn ACL. They don't know when he did it. His knee came up a little sore during training camp this year, and they did an MRI, and they said, you got a torn ACL, but they don't know when it happened, and he's still playing. Second and ten, and Harris pounded down. Boy, very rude. That was very said, rude I got of you him. this time. You hear the crowd yelling, rude. <laughs> <laughs> Big hit by Barrett. He very said, rude. It was interesting. I thought Ray was telling us how he gets so nervous. He says, I get stressed out. I feel the pressure. He says, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but he really gets into this ball game. But boy, you wouldn't think that a senior captain would get as stirred up, maybe emotionally, yeah, he, as he, he does before these games. He described himself as anal retentive, and he said he gets antsy all the time. Here comes both corners. Got a penalty marker. No play here. The anticipation of the pressure may have caused movement in the offensive line. And yeah, Nebraska showed that blitz look early. And, and a lot of offense. times offensive linemen Ball see that out of the, the corner penalty. of their eye and they, they get a little, a little nervous, and rightly so. And another one that's called on Chris White. Yeah, the left tackle there, just he wanted to be ready. Coach Bauer working the officials on the sideline. Well, that backs him up now. Third and 13. Anthony P. Ryan is way out wide to the right this time. Amy Carter is in as a slot receiver. Hallman on the rollout. He's good at throwing on the run. Couldn't get his man here. P. Ryan was the intended receiver. So once again, they gave up one first down on this particular possession, but the crowd responding here, enjoying the fact that they have four Southern Miss into a kicking situation. Yeah, the, the red shirts proud of the black shirts. The red shirts being in the stands, of course. Kellen Houston back to accept the punt. Luke Johnson standing at his own 14-yard line. Not as good as what we saw earlier. In fact, this one doesn't take much of a bounce at all. Got it across midfield to the 46 yard line. So a short kick. Good field possession here for Nebraska. Huskers are leading 17 to 9. They've scored on their last two possessions. Yeah. 
Midway through the third quarter in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Cornhuskers enjoy the 17 to 9 lead. They've scored in their first two possessions of the second half, and Daly, looking for some room to work, now decides to keep it. And he gets across midfield to about the 48 yard line in Southern Miss territory. Michael Bowley is there to make the tackle. Man, what a surprise. Bowley all over the field. An All American coming in, the preseason. Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year, and he's made a number of plays for Southern Miss today. Last year, he had 10 or more tackles in 11 different ball games. Gives you an idea of his effectiveness and just why he is the uh, Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. Ball spotted at the 49 as Daly goes to work once again. Corey Ross, he broke off a big one earlier in this quarter, this time out of bounds. Just short of the 40 yard line. Corey Ross has been outstanding all afternoon. That, that big run that really kind of opened things up for Nebraska, the 52 yarder, I think took the lid off of this offense. He has 130 yards on the ground thus far. This one, as you look at the average yards per play by half, and the bottom line there, Nebraska more than doubling their output. Ten and a half yards a crack here in this third quarter. And that's what they are accustomed to seeing around here. Daly with a quick pump fake. Now fires down the middle and can't find his tight end this time, Matt Harriet. Tried to sell the pump fake over to the right side to draw the safeties out of the middle and find Harrion in the seam. And I think Daly just overthrew that one intentionally. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. There was three Golden Eagle defenders around Harrion, and I think he just threw it away. Matt Harrion, who scored a touchdown earlier, said he's had a hard time getting used to the motion and the shifts and the nuances of the West Coast offense, but certainly looking more comfortable here with each and every game, this being the second game of a new season for the Huskers. Quick toss out here and unable to get a hand on it was Mulkey. Oh, he's got himself maybe a cramp or a problem there with his knee as he made that pivot and tried to turn around. Well, Mulkey, we saw him. He can take a little pain. He, he took that shot over the middle and was able to bounce up, and now he gets himself off the field, limping on that right leg. Balls at the 41 yard line. It's third and 10 now for Nebraska. Not where they like to be. Bilkington is split wide to the right side. To the near side is Terrence Nunn. Daly out of the shotgun. Delayed blitz. Pass goes to the sideline. He just threw that one away. Good pressure by the Southern Miss defense, forcing Daly to just have to get rid of it. And he actually had Nunn coming open from the opposite side underneath, but he just too much pressure on him. He wasn't able to read the, the, the receiver downfield. Sam Cook coming on now to handle the punting chores for Nebraska. Junior out of Seward, Nebraska. Marvin Young, he had some great stats as a punt returner last year. Number 10 in the nation, averaged 13 and a half yards. Hasn't had many opportunities thus far in this contest. Cook's kick high. Boy, look at the hang time on that one. Bounces right at the 10. And Nebraska falling at it at the five yard line. Let's take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook. And we'll go to the guy I think who has probably been uh, played as well as anybody on defense so far today. Michael Bowley of Southern Miss. This was earlier in the second half. He's lined up wide to the left, comes on a delayed blitz, and he's just a relentless pursuer of the of the ball carrier. And he actually runs down Joe Daly from behind. And then, as I said, they use Bowley all over the place. And he comes from the outside to make that last play. Pounding his way forward to about the 13 yard line and we'll check in with Vince. Guys, you were talking about Michael Bowley. Michael's also got a brother in the program. Kenneth Bowley didn't make the trip because of an injury, but I'm with their mother, uh, Marilyn Pointer. And uh, interesting story that Kenneth went to uh, the Army before walking on at Southern Myth and served in Afghanistan. I'm sure that uh, had to make you proud. Yeah, it did. And, and so, but walking on it allowed him to finally 
meet his dreams that he wanted to do is play college ball as well. Something that would be better for him. Now you have two boys in the Southern Miss program, and how did that uh, change their relationship as brothers with Kenneth going to Afghanistan and fighting in the war? They were always close, but when he went to war, it, you know, the uh, possibility of losing someone, it makes you grow a little stronger. So that sort of solidified their relationship even more than before. So it's it was it was a harrowing experience for all of us, but it made them a little tighter and a little stronger. Maybe it makes everyone appreciate the freedom of playing football on a Saturday afternoon. Yes, it does. There's a lot of a lot of things you. Appreciate more once you come back to the States and when you're out of it. Thanks for being with us, Marilyn. Great story. Nice to be here. That's Marilyn Pointer, uh, mother of the Bowley brothers, Michael and Kenneth. A little pitch out going to the far side and nothing happening there for Antoine Currington. And Vincent, certainly we are more reminded of it and this being the anniversary of 9-11 uh, and the terrorist acts that in large part led to the situations in Iraq and Afghanistan and these places. And, we were Michael. with us earlier today paying tribute this the fans here with a great salute uh, with a giant card stunt if you will involving close to 80,000 people that showed the American flag and it was just a terrific moment as we remember uh, the victims of three years ago today. How close to the 30 this time. But Keevan Smith coming up to make the tackle. You know, more on, on Michael Bowley. He said he's got great respect, respect for his brother Kenneth, and he said it was rough each day when his brother was in Afghanistan and said he's always looked up to his brother, and he said, you know, just that made him feel like he a little bit more inspired to always do his best and to play this game for his brother, and he did so in great fashion. Third down. They need a yard. Southern Miss has had trouble moving the football in this third quarter. They pound it straight ahead. Good job that time on the carry by Wayne Hardy. Only the second time that he's carried the football today, the fullback. And he gets them the first down. Well, time permitting, the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report with John Craig and Aaron from our New York studios. Stay tuned for highlights and analysis from today's matchups, reminding you that this is the first game of a triple hitter on ABC. Those guys look like they're having too much fun. Well, Aaron especially <laughs> just looks way too happy. Almond with time to throw. Got a man, oh, stretching hard. Couldn't quite hang on to it was Anthony Pirine. Nebraska brought the blitz again, but it was picked up well by Southern Miss, and you know, Daly had the time to make that throw. But he just is a little bit wide with it, a little bit off. But that ball should be caught. Anytime the ball hits both your hands as a receiver, it's incumbent upon you to bring the thing in. Stuart Bradley had the hand right in the face in Dustin Allman as he released. Sharon Moore working straight ahead, close to the 40-yard line. Sharon Moore is a nice changeup back from Anthony Harris. He's was the fastest out of all the running backs in their spring testing. He was. Actually at uh, Northwest Community College for a couple of years came in had a decent season last year and he, he's their number two punch in that backfield. Harris has been the workhorse today. He has carried 17 times. You saw a quick look at some numbers there in Sharon Moore. Third down once again this time. Longer yardage needed. On the slant. Is that ball caught? No it was not. Very close to the 50 yard line. Nice break on the ball by Fabian Washington, the corner out there. He saw the slant coming and got there at the same time the ball did. See P. Ryan make that inside cut, and Fabian Washington shows up right on time and basically knocks, knocks the receiver right off the football. Wobbly kick, not going very far. Bounces at the 30, and uh, looks like it's going to. Well, it rolls down to the 24-yard line before, and it stayed inbounds. you got to milk those things as long as you can. Well, Joe Daly has had a much better third quarter than he did in the first half in terms of putting points on the board. We talked about all of the plays in the West Coast offense, and amazingly, on his belt, 368 plays, and they're not easy to understand. Let's give you just a quick sample now of what it sounds like when Joe Daly calls a play in the huddle. Move the west right, F left, 200 dragon space. 
Uh, we got Green Rice Slider, FRH2 run, auto to the G bubble, killed 58 Exxon. I mean, so much, so much. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, so much indeed. Much. Oh, my. And he's done an outstanding job by all accounts of, of really, uh, you know, getting that verbiage down and able to run this offense. Off the little trickery. Here's the tight end. Very and out of bounds. A nice little different look that time from the West Coast offense. Well executed. See, Coach Callahan, he's the one who calls the plays. Now, West Coast offense, and this is my definition of it, is the balance between the run and the pass. Everyone thinks it's pass, but it's balance. And the timing and the precision of the quarterbacks and the receivers, they change up on the run a lot. Then the shifts, the motions, and the personnel group is something really that Bill Callahan has added to the mix, the tempo and the flexibility, and then take what you want. That's what Joe, how Joe Daly described it to us. A lot of times you hear, oh, we'll take what they give us. Not in this deal. They take what they want. And one of the big challenges, the coach has said, is the speed of execution in a new season, learning this system. And they performed well. Got a penalty marker down. Chugging along out here is Tierre Green. See if this one comes back or not. When Coach Callahan also told us that when he installed the West Coast offense here, he did it exactly the way they did it with the Raiders. And he was really proud of his, his team because they don't have the time that you have in the NFL where you have all day to study things. They had to do it and also go to school and, and take care of other things, a limited amount of time that they're able to spend with him. And he was really proud of his Illegal football motion, team. motion, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Really proud of the way that they assimilated the, the complexity of this offense and then executed it in particular last week and then here in the second half today they've executed very well. Yeah, I, you know, we've been around this game a long time, but you know, you, you mentioned 368 plays and a sophomore quarterback trying to, you know, be the, the, the ringleader out there. That I still have a hard time comprehending that. Yeah, well, Daly, he says he feels older than a sophomore, and when we met with him, he certainly handled himself much older than what you would expect a sophomore in college to do so. Brandon Jackson is now in the backfield, and the handoff goes to Jackson. Penalty marker down again. Nothing happening there at the 35-yard line. Let's check in with John Saunders now. Our studio's in New York. John? Still problems for Kansas State. Paul Pinniger again looks for Matt Rivera and finds him for the second touchdown pass. This one covers 29 yards. By the way, Darren Sproles has just 15 yards rushing for K-State. Fresno State putting a big-time hurt on K-State here in this one today. Penalty was declined. Ball at the 35-yard line. Second down and about 14. Approaching the two-minute mark here of this third quarter that's been dominated by the Big Red of Nebraska. Pierre Green now in as a running back in that high formation. Fakes the hand off to Green and now throws. There's Harrion. And oh, he elevates and makes a terrific catch at the 44-yard line. Travis Coley was over there to defend, but one of the things the Nebraska coaching staff loves is the way Harrion has that ability to get that 6-5 frame up in the air. Right, here he is. He's on the backside of the formation. They run play action. Look at how he sells the inside. Looks the safety right off away from him, and then the acrobatic catch, and that's the big thing that they all spoke about him, the upper body flexibility, which enables him to make that kind of acrobatic move and grab a ball out of the air. Yeah, that ball was a little bit behind him. He had to turn back and did a great job of adjusting. You make a quarterback look good. Well, we got a false start on Nebraska, and that's our boy Seppo. And he paid for it. Evyaye from Vasa, Finland, who came to this country in 1999 as an exchange student. Seppo not real happy with himself right now. He's a large man. Boy, 315-pound junior. I don't know where they find a helmet to fit him. I'm just going to say, that's that's a big old pumpkin sitting on top of that body right there. Huh? <laughs> well, it matches the rest of him. That's the good news. Converted from a defensive lineman to an offensive lineman. Tierra Green straight ahead there off the corner. Gets five or six yards. Daryl Bennett coming up to make the stop for Southern Miss. That's just student body left. Pulling the guard to lead the sweep on the outside. Good blocking from the extra tight end there, Kaiser. 
Let's go to Vince. Well, an eye back named Green wearing number 30, certainly a familiar sight to Nebraska fans. The Cornhuskers faithful remember Amon Green, who ran for 22 touchdowns in that championship season of 97 98 before going to the NFL. Tierre, often referred to as Amon's cousin, he's just a redshirt freshman expecting to make a name for himself here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he's done a pretty good job through the first game and a half. This time, Michael Bowley coming up to make the stop on Corey Ross. You get a look at Tierre Green. He has 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. That's why they confuse him with Amon Green, because they, they look a lot alike and they play football alike. And Tierre says he doesn't really talk a whole lot to Amon, but he, he doesn't mind the comparison. He said Amon's really helped him out in terms of his work ethic and being prepared for these games. And that's a great accomplishment for just a freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. Daly looking over the middle. Ball is intercepted. Nathan Stewart on the run, and he is going to take it to the house. Wow. How about that? The third interception today by the Golden Eagles, and it results in a touchdown. And I'm not sure what Joe Daly was trying to do with the football because he threw it right to Nathan Stewart. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. And a conversion attempt coming up here. If they go for one, it would be a one-point game. If they elect to go for two, they can tie it up if successful. Well, we're getting almost, we're almost into the fourth quarter. And to me, the fourth quarter is when you start to go for two. I don't believe in going for it any earlier than that. A little confusion over here. And, and right there is Stewart. And he looked like he didn't know where he was going. And all of a sudden, the ball showed up to him. And now he knows where he's going <laughs> to the house. Nice little adjustment right there to elude the one tackler. And here comes the two-point attempt to tie the game. Oh, we got movement all over the place again. And penalty markers all over the place. Patrick Corbett, the extra tight end, was definitely moving before the snap. Offense, number 77, false start. Five-yard penalty, repeat the try. I believe that that's the first touchdown Nate Stewart has scored and uh, comes at an opportune time, and it certainly may uh, impact the momentum of this game that had clearly swung over to Nebraska in this third quarter. Well, I don't know. Now with, with, with this kind of distance to go, it opens up your playbook a little bit more, and Southern Miss can do a, a different sort of things from this area in the field to try and put it in the end zone. Reverse. Reverse. Young with a man to beat. Penalty marker down. And didn't make it to the end zone. I think they're going to call a clip on that block out there as Carriker, Carriker is limping a little bit. He's holding his leg. He got, he got chopped down, and I think it was from behind. Adam Carriker, who was a quarterback in high school, believe it or not, 275-pound sophomore, comes from Kennewick, Washington, all the way to Nebraska to play football and kind of hobbling off to the sidelines. We'll get the call here. Clip. Offense. Penalty decline. Try no good. Well, you called it, Ray. The clip. Yeah. Carriker is all right, but uh, obviously... No conversion on the two-point attack. Right there, and it's Chris White, the offensive tackle, who peels back to make that block over there and open things up, and he definitely clipped Carriker. Well, the third interception, and a big one it was. Dayton Stewart taking it in for the touchdown, and we remind you that ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, after Nebraska had dominated the bulk of the third quarter, Daly picked off for the third time, resulting in the touchdown run. Failed conversion attempt makes it a two-point game now for Big Red. At 17-15, we start fourth quarter play. Nebraska kicking it off, driving it down to Tierre Green at the one-yard line. Out to about the 27. Dylan Kluckler coming up to make the tackle. Coming up in part two of our ABC College Football triple header, most of you will be seeing Colorado take on Washington State. And tonight at 8 Eastern, Colorado State battles number one USC. There'll be other regional action, so check local listings for the games in your area. 
26 yard return. Ball at the 27 yard line now. And Nebraska with the two point advantage. Joe Daly's got to shake off that last interception, get that out of his mind completely. Worry about that tomorrow. Daly now 15 for 28, 117 yards, but those three interceptions looming very big. Corey Ross trying to hang on to the football as he squirts out over the 30 to 31. Had him turned sideways. Somebody was trying to strip it out of his hands. Keen Lockett with the tackle. Pork chop held onto that one like it was a hamburger or something. <laughs> Well, you just couldn't ask for a better day in terms of weather temperature climbing into the low and mid 80s today here and maybe a bit of a factor for these players. It was an early start today and just a superb day for football in Lincoln, Nebraska. Arian starts a motion move. Daly with time. Lobs it out here. Intended receiver was Ross Pilkington. So it's third and five now. That's a part of that West Coast, West Coast offense where you, you stack three receivers and then you try and balance where they are as far as one in the flat, one in the corner, and then one deep. And Daly had Pilkington wide open and he just overthrew the football. One of the guys that we haven't seen for Nebraska, I'm a little surprised, is Willie Amos, who had a terrific right. game last week in the opener, and I don't recall having seen him. He, he was he went out for a one deep one earlier, and that's the only time we've seen him. But we've seen this guy a lot. Yes, we have at the 37-yard line. He's going to be close to that first down marker. I don't know if he got there or not. They may have to measure this one. And that's Harrion's responsibility to make sure he takes that route to the depth first and ten. of the chains, and he did so. Catches now better than 70 yards. There's Matt Herring right there in his normal tight end spot. And this is just going to be a, a five yard stick route. He gets a little bit of a push off off the linebacker, breaks away, and gets creates great separation. And then it's a good throw from Daly. Oh, ball's loose. Daly got back on top of it. And Matthew Chatelaine had a chance to recover the football, but unfortunately he couldn't see it. It was sitting right behind him on the ground. There's some confusion on his handoff with Tierra Green, and it slides right through his hands. Here's Chatelaine. He says, Oop. Oop, forgot about the ball back here. He put the brakes on, but he couldn't get back to beat Daly to the football. Good recovery by Daly as Chatelaine was trying to get turned in the other direction. Loss back to the 35, second and 13. Ross trying to pick his way for a yard or two, but nothing opens up for him this time. Give credit to that Southern Miss defensive line. They, they've played very well all day with Chad Ruffin up there, Terrence Ford, who had the interception earlier, Akeem Lockett, Chatelaine's been making plays, Eric Scott, and linebacker cash in on that one. They have played very well up front for the most part today. And I'm sure that if you're the head coach of Southern Miss, Jeff Bauer, there are so many uncertainties about playing a season opener, and particularly when you're on the road in Lincoln, Nebraska, in front of nearly 80,000 people, uh, that's a pretty Pretty tough challenge, but of course, Southern Miss has been known as a team will play anyone, anytime, anywhere. That's been their motto in recent years. That's what they say, and that's what they do. And they've got California coming up on Thursday night this next week. Here's Ross. He's got some room to work. Across midfield to the 49-yard line of Southern Miss territory before Daryl Bennett bumped him out of bounds. Boy, they set that screen pass up very nicely. Good job by Daly uh, of sucking the rush. And you see him, he looks like he's going to pass, pass, and then now he takes the time, dumps it outside, a perfect throw as Ross catches it on the run, and there's nobody out on the perimeter until it, Bennett shows up late. That's one of the rare times when the Southern Miss defense has not had a defender right there. One of the other times was, of course, that touchdown pass to a wide open Matt Harrion in the third quarter. Nothing happening there for Tierra Green. John Saunders, meanwhile, has got something happening somewhere as he keeps tabs on a busy day in college football. Well, Iowa against Iowa State and watch quarterback Austin Flynn. 
Rolls out to his right, spots his receiver, and goes 40 yards to Todd Blight, who rumbles into the end zone. And right now, a 17-10 lead for Iowa. Iowa and Iowa State, little rivalry going there early in the brand new season. Oh, the ball, was that rule to completion or not? No. Tierra Green couldn't hang on to it. Southern Miss was hoping. Well, that he was, held it long enough. It was Michael Boley with the pressure again. See, coming right here, Boley just mm. working that pass rush. Well, he almost got a hand on that too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And he, he's working on the guard here, and Boley's, you know, he's a 240 pounder, but he's going against Jake Anderson at 290, and Boley kind of just blew right past him. So it'll be third and ten. Ball at the 49, so they missed territory. 11 and a half minutes to go here in our fourth quarter. You see Nebraska hanging on to a two point advantage. Change of direction by Daly. Chase throws on the run out of bounds intended for Grant Mulkey. Oh, and Southern Miss just keeps bringing the pressure. They, they, they're blitzing about half the time right now by my count and they, they're just getting after Joe Daly and they they believe that if they can disrupt him and make him make a quicker decision then they're going to be better off and it's paid off for him with the three interceptions thus far. Well this is the third game and a three game set in the last few years between these two schools and when Southern Miss visited Lincoln in a couple of years back they didn't win the game, but they were within a touchdown when it was all said and done. Now they're about to get the ball back at the 15-yard line on the fair catch, trailing by two. So we'll see if the Golden Eagles can generate something here to regain the lead after this break. Now it's time for our Pacific Life game summary, and this one's all about the interceptions early on in the ball game. Daly was hit, intercepted by Ford. That led to this field goal. Gave Southern Miss the three-point lead early on. And then in the second half, a Josh Bullock interception right here. Paves the way for Nebraska's first touchdown. A pass from Daly to Matt Herrian in the corner of the end zone. And we're not done with the interceptions yet. Nathan Stewart, number 49, right over here. He makes the pick, and he goes all the way to pay dirt himself. For the touchdown for Southern Miss and Southern Miss 12 of their 15 points have come off of turnovers. Turnovers were a concern for Callahan and his staff. Harris trying to maintain his footing there as he tried to get around the left corner. Barrett Rude was there once again. Still another stop. Count out to the 15 yard line. This is a big drive right here for Southern Miss. Still just under 11 minutes left to play and they're trailing by three, but it, they would love to come down and at least get a field goal here and put the pressure back on the big red. Harris has now carried 18 times, 71 yards. Here he is again, no, play action fake. Quick pass out here is caught by Pirine. Slipped down and bounced up there. And able to get his hands on it and that's Daly's responsibility to get that ball to Pirine so he can run because he was set up he had two blockers out in front and just one defender if he's able to catch that ball in stride he could still be running saw the reaction from coach Jeff Bauer on the sideline former quarterback as Vince was telling us early on Right over the middle, in stride. Pirine hangs on this time to the 20-yard line. Nice little slant. Not enough for the first down, though, and they're looking for run after the catch in this situation. He's just going to duck underneath, run what we used to call a China route, run it underneath there, and it's just good coverage and good pursuit all the way by Fabian Washington. He didn't let Pirine outrun him. Punting average today for Southern Miss, just a fraction under 40 yards. Fair catch called for at the 34-yard line. So we have 9.21 to play here in our fourth quarter, and Nebraska getting the ball back with pretty good position, leading 17 to 15. 
ESPN's coverage of the National Football League continues with Sunday night football. Zach Thomas leading the Miami Dolphins star power defense against Carson Palmer and the Cincinnati Bengals. The game incidentally also available in the high definition on ESPN HD. Call your local cable operator, direct TV, or the Dish Network today. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern with NFL Prime Time. And for more information, you just log on to ESPN.com. Maybe a yard gain by Corey Ross this time. Eric Scott with the tackle for Southern Miss. Actually, it's that Chiefs Broncos game that uh, is coming up on ESPN. Look forward to seeing that one. See if the Kansas City Chiefs can play some defense this year. They've got the offense to go. See Ross getting a breather here as he goes across the way to the sidelines. See how Nebraska elects to play it here now. If they'll keep totally on the ground or if they'll continue to mix it up. Mulkey is the man in motion. Tierra Green, he's got some room. He's got a first down. He's got more as he gets out the midfield. Still on his feet. <laughs> he's not done. Penalty marker comes down. There Southern Miss claiming they got the football. Daryl Bennett was there. And the officials are saying they've got the football, wow. but there's a flag. There is a flag. That, that may take that turnover away from them. The way Green was reacting, I had the feeling that he thought maybe somebody had gotten hold of a face mask. We'll find out it here. It happened before the fumble. Nebraska will keep the ball. The flag was dropped in error. Fumble, recovery, first down. They waved it off. Wow, and there is another key turnover. A mistake there after a big gainer by Tierra Green. I think the official grabbed the flag instead of the beanbag to mark where the ball went down. This happens so often when a back is fighting for extra yards, trying and trying to fight for it, and the defenders, they're fighting for the football. They're trying to punch it out, and, and they it gets do. knocked out right there. Wow. Well, that's got the attention of the Nebraska fans. From the 49, Southern Miss trailing by two. Harris stutter steps his way for a tough three, four, five yards. He did a nice job of making Stuart Bradley miss in the backfield. Bradley was back there and had a shot at Harris for a yard or two loss, and Harris just juked him and ended up gaining six. Mentioned that the next assignment in this short week for Jeff Bauer and the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss, the Golden Bears of California, in Hattiesburg on Thursday night, Nebraska will be in action next week at Pittsburgh, a week from today. From the 46, fake handoff. Allman sets up, throwing deep. There's Young. He's got the catch. What a He's throw. got the score. Marvin Young for the touchdown, and what a strike thrown that time by Dustin Allman. 46 yards. That was just a perfect throw from Dustin Allman. Laid it over the top of two defenders who had close coverage. He's going to give the fake and run the bootleg action. Here's the fake on the run. He boots around, and he sees his man. He lays it up over the top. And that's just a perfect throw right over the head of Josh Bullocks. And Young makes his way into the end zone, and Lightning has struck here from Southern Miss. Absolutely. 7.47 remaining in the fourth, and Southern Miss trying to build that lead. They're going to go for the two-point conversion here, try to get a six-point advantage. I'm not sure I understand the, the reasoning for going for two here. Allman lobs it. Harris has it, but he's short of the goal line. I suppose a six-point lead is better than four, but it doesn't change anything. Nebraska is going to need a touchdown to get back into the lead either way. Penalty marker down here in the uh, back might, of the end zone. They, they may have run out of time on the play clock. Uh huh. Oh, look at Jeff Bowen down there. Play of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Now you kick it, I think. Yeah, I, I thought you should have kicked it in the first place. I haven't but seen the kicker move on to the field. Right, they're going to go. They're going to throw it in there again. Well, this will be the third time they've attempted now a two-point conversion. Actually, they had a penalty and a second attempt on an earlier score. This will be the second attempt here, so it's the fourth time today. Allman throws a bullet. It was intended for Deron Lawrence, 
No chance to grab onto it, but they did get the six, and they now lead 21 to 17. Well, let's see how Nebraska responds to this challenge now that they're on the short end of the scoreboard. Southern Miss has taken advantage of the takeaways. 19 of their points, excuse me, 18 of their points have come off of turnovers. Sierra Green's fumble after a terrific play where he fought for extra yardage, setting up that score. And now Southern Miss getting ready to kick off. 747 left in regulation. This is Green at the one yard line. Across the 25. And we'll check in on the sidelines with Vince. You saw Marvin Young with that touchdown catch, and he is a walk-on to this program at Southern Miss. Jeff Bauer always welcomes the walk-ons. In fact, he has awarded 40 scholarships over his 14 years to players who started as walk-ons. You look at some of the names of those who are currently on the roster who have earned scholarships. Stephen Daigle, the most recent. And when uh, you earn a scholarship, the coach presents you with a football signed by all the teams, symbolic of the fact that you've earned a scholarship at Southern Miss. Of course, you like to have that financial aid as well, but the football symbolizes what you've done on the practice field to earn a scholarship at Southern Miss. What a great momento. Oh, here's a nice run across the 35 by Corey Ross for Nebraska. Michael Boley coming up for another tackle. Coach Bowen is uh, talk about Vince is telling him about all of the walk-ons in his 14 years. He's fond of saying, Ray, you can't measure the size of the heart. And certainly that is a very fine attribute for so many of these young kids that get an opportunity to earn a scholarship and play. All right. He said he loves the overachievers, the underdogs, the people who earn things through their hard work, and he loves to reward that kind of thing. Ross again to the 40-yard line. We're talking about Bauer. How about his philosophy at Southern Miss? He had this to say in a conversation with Vince yesterday. It means a lot. Uh, we've, uh, you know, I'm going on 14 years. We've had 40 walk-ons earn scholarships. Uh, our deep snapper this year, Stephen Daigle. But when you look at our football team, there's there's four starters on the field that are walk-ons. Our, both our wide receivers, Marvin Young, Deron Lawrence, Chad Ruffin, LeVon Pierce, uh, and Luke Johnson. Actually, all five of them are starting. But um, we reward those kids. We give them an opportunity. We treat them just like scholarship athletes. And if they contribute to our success, we're going to reward them with a scholarship. Green tripped up at the 40. Interesting that three of the walk-ons for Bowen over the years from Southern Miss have gone on to the pros, including Sammy Winder a few years back. And I think it's a great thing that he does. And, that, you know, when they award the, the football that Vince showed you, they do it in a team meeting. And they do it in front of the entire team. And, and Coach Bauer said, I get emotional. He says, oh, that's some of the emo most emotional thing that I have to go through is to talk about what this guy, what this kid has done for the program to earn that scholarship. Mulkey goes in motion to the left. Coming into the slot at the right is Harriet. And Daly looking toward the left side. Throws and completes the pass to Ross Pilkington. So Nebraska trying to answer back as the clock becomes more and more of a factor now inside six minutes to go, picking up the first down, but trailing by four. Talk about timing and precision in the West Coast offense, and this is perfect right here. See Pilkington makes the precise route, gets right to the sidelines, catches the ball before he, he goes out of bounds, and Daly delivered it in perfect time. One of the reasons that Pilkington is one of the captains this year for the Cornhuskers, just short of midfield. Here's Ross. He bounces free. Ross out of bounds, and he may have picked up 11 for another first down at the 40-yard line. Seth Cumbie bounced him out of bounds. Corey Ross. Oh, he's piling up the numbers. This is just a lead play right here. Watch Bowley. He looks a little tired to me. He's going to come up and take on the fullback, and he gets caught inside. Wrong shoulder by Bowley, and then Ross just runs over the next defender, uh, Kevis Coley, and shows you he's got power as well as quickness. Lowered his shoulder and just bowled right through it. Ross now has 160 yards rushing in this game. Looked like he was limping there for a moment, but he's still in the, on the field, the deep back in this set. Fake handoff this time. Daly on the roll, throws it out here and completes it. 
the tight end or the fullback, Steve Freewall, gathering that one in. Nice little misdirection there. Bootleg faked the handoff to Ross, and then he finds his fullback. Free wall out in the flat. Well, the Huskers are definitely on the move. They're trying to answer back and atone for all of the turnover problems they've had today and that have them in this bind with five and a half minutes to go. Now at the 23-yard line, Callahan studying that play chart. He likes to make the call so that his guys on the field have 16 to 18 seconds on the play clock to initiate. Ross almost lost it, hangs on. Squeezes down to maybe the 21-yard line. Matthew Chatelain, who's had a terrific game defensively, is in there and also stepping up was Antoine Cash. And Nebraska has an amazing record here at Memorial Stadium. Since 1988, just six mm. home losses here. Phenomenal. And, and then they lost to good opponents. Right here you see the final rankings of those opponents. And they're on the verge of number seven here unless they can <laughs> punch this thing in. Daly to his left this time. He's got room. He keeps it. Oh, he loses the football. It goes right into the hands of one of the deep backs for Southern Mississippi. And another turnover for the Huskers denies them. Oh, and Darnell, or Daryl Bennett, excuse me, has had a great game. Look at Comes him. up with another takeaway. And there was confusion on that play as Daly looked like he was looking to throw the ball. He had two guys out in front of him, and they were looking to block for him. And then there was just confusion. And then at the end, it all broke apart. Well, we'll take one more look here as he ended up keeping the ball and rolling out to his left. And he ends up losing it. And the Golden Eagles have it back. Joe Daly on the phone after he ended up coughing up the football. That negated that opportunity. The fifth turnover today by Big Red. Wayne Hardy working his way out across the 15-yard line. Let's go back and look at this most costly, most recent turnover. Well, you see Daly put the, arm, or the ball in his left arm, and here's Barner right here. He comes over, and his left arm swings around and knocks it out from the backside, and it lands right into the hands of Daryl Bennett. And Daly is having some turnover problems here early in his Nebraska career. He's, this is his second start. He's already turned the ball over eight times. Seven interceptions and one fumble. Sense of urgency in the crowd reaction now as they try to hem in Anthony Harris, and they do a good job of that behind the line of scrimmage. Bernard Thomas. And Nebraska's going to start using their timeouts to prevent Southern Miss from milking the clock and letting that thing run down. Well, you see Bennett there on the uh, sidelines on a hot afternoon in Nebraska, but boy, he's not feeling the heat right now. They've been putting the heat on the big red. And, and now it's it's up to Bill Callahan's football team to come up with something on defense to turn this thing around. There's Coach Cosgrove in the middle. He's looking at his list of things. What can we do to stop the Southern Miss offense and get the ball back in our hands? But those turnovers have just been disastrous for Nebraska, and it started early on as Joe Daly threw an interception in the, at the early in the first quarter, and that's th that started things going. See, Daly is going to lose the ball on this. Here's a, the interception that Nathan Stewart took back for the touchdown. Had a nice little convoy there. And there's another, fu that, another fumble. It's just been one thing after another for Joe Daly. Well, as you pointed out, we saw graphically, these fans here are not used to seeing Nebraska in this state this late in a ball game. 340 to go, trailing 21-17. Points off turnovers. 18 to 7. Allman keeping it, gets to the 20, maybe the 21-yard line. It's to be short of the first down. 
I like the call though quarterback draw with Dustin Allman and boy he'd have been better off just running straight up the middle and trying to get the sticks I think he danced too much and he is going to end up a couple of yards short and Nebraska stops the clock again another timeout has been taken by Nebraska 328 remaining in this one oh don't you dare go away If there is a nightmarish time for football coaches, it's when you talk in turnovers because that's something that you stress every ball game. And the turnovers have been huge in this one. And right now, Nebraska has forced a punting situation, fourth and one. They'll get the ball back. Ooh, they almost got the block. Good kick. At about the 43-yard line that time is Kellen Houston, his muscle down. Now we'll find out about the offense from Nebraska if they can win a game. Well, you got a ball game on the line. We've talked about how unusual it is to find the Cornhuskers in this position. They have made the mistakes, though. They've kind of they, they've made their own bed. They're having to sleep in it. That but now we'll see have. if they can pull it out. Well, that's the key. Is in spite of all those mistakes, they still have an opportunity to win this ball game with a nice drive here, get points on the board, put the pressure back on Southern Miss. Well, let's see what Daly can do in this situation. After a 47-yard punt, a nine-yard return, the ball's at the 41-yard line. Time is closing down on three minutes. They still have plenty of time, so they don't need to take a, a big shot right here. Actually, the perfect scenario would be to move the ball down the field and eat up clock themselves. And now with the confusion, Daly has to use another timeout, Ooh. and that's all three timeouts are all gone now for Nebraska. Callahan studiously checking here to see, okay, what do we do in this situation now? 3.18 to go. We're now out of timeouts. All part of the learning and growing process for a sophomore quarterback in a very complex offensive scheme. Time permitting, the thrifty car rental postgame report comes along with John Craig and Aaron. Inviting you to stay tuned for highlights and analysis from today's matchups. First game of a triple header here on ABC. I'm Gary Gerald along with Ray Bentley and Vince Welch has been working the sidelines in the heat today. Callahan and Daly continue their conversation. They are 59 yards away from taking the lead back in this contest. They're going to have to come up with something to, to move the football down the field and, and keep it in their possession. That's really been the problem today with Joe Daly is, is the turnovers. For these Nebraska fans, the curiosity of a new season and a new offense certainly uh, led to a lot of optimism after last week's result. But right now, that's all being challenged by a very stubborn and effective Southern Miss defense. And that's been their strong suit in recent years. We gave you the numbers early about how tough they've been to score on. They have capitalized. We welcome those of you who have been watching UCLA and Illinois. Ross Pilkington just making a catch on a Joe Daly pass with 3.12 to go. Nebraska is trailing 21-17. A 21-yard pickup has moved the ball to the 38-yard line now in Southern Miss territory. Nebraska in the last 15, 16 years has lost only six times on this playing field. And right now they're down four. But a wide open man right over the middle. The catch is made by Grant Mulkey. He scored a touchdown early in the second half. And he puts it at the 24-yard line. And they'll move the chains one more time after a 14-yard pickup. And the key to that one was the protection that Daly had. It allowed him the time to let Mulkey get clear through the middle. And he threw a, a decent ball. Not the best thrown pass, but Mulkey adjusted to it and made the big catch. They talk about a new era in Nebraska football storied history under Bill Callahan and right now being tested with time winding down. Handoff to Ross. He's had a banner day for those of you who just joined us over 160 yards and out close to the 20-yard line. 
Ray Bentley is alongside. I'm Gary Gerald. We're in the booth. Vince Welch is down patrolling the sidelines today for this one in front of 77,887, the 264th consecutive sellout for Nebraska football. That's a span that goes all the way back to 1962. Turnovers have been the story of this one. Missed opportunities by Nebraska. Giving up the football, three interceptions, a pair of lost fumbles. Daly now trying to roll away from the pressure, being chased, circles back again. He throws away out on the far sideline. <laughs> that was, Which that was way excellent. was he going? <laughs> yeah, it was a, a good deal by Daly to go ahead and do the spin move. You're going to get a cross fight. Here's Bowley. He's coming here. And number 51, Dylan Kleckler, will come behind him to make this blitz try to work and do a nice job of picking up Kleckler. But Bowley's on the chase. That's why Daly had to run to the sidelines. He made a nice decision not to go out of bounds and take the loss. I don't know about the spin move on the toss, but it, it was effective. A little spin around there. It's a Keem Lockett was putting some pressure in his face. Now remember, the field goal doesn't do him much good with a minute 53 to go. It is third down. Over the middle, got his man close to a first down. Pulled down is Terrence Nunn. Right around the 15-yard line, they need to get to the 14. And they'll spot it right at the 15. So it's going to be fourth and one. And field goal is not an option at this point, trailing by four with a minute and a half left. And out of timeout. This is a huge play right here. The sophomore quarterback, Joe Daly. Two tight ends set. They powered ahead. It's Ross. He's got the first down. How about Corey Ross? Five foot six, 190 pounds, and he powers his way for the first down. He gets hit, and he just gets this thing on effort. Bam, right there, the spin off, the incredible balance, and the indomitable will of Corey Ross moves the chains for the Huskers. 169 yards, but maybe none quite as important as that carry right there for just a couple in the first down. Seth, Seth Cumbie. Cumbie, who is the right corner is the injured player for Southern Miss. And only a minute 17 to go, and while they tend to him on the field, we'll check in again in our New York studios with John Saunders. Well, Gary, it's time for the singular All-America Player of the Week. Could it be Andrew Walter? Three touchdown passes in this game. To vote, use your cell phone, text the word in player in, and send it to 64444, or go on to ESPN.com keyword singular Sun Devils for that nine point lead late in that one Cumbie being helped to his feet now Boy, what a way to kick off a triple header of college football here on ABC today and those who have just joined us we showed this Earlier, incredibly, Nebraska has lost just six games since 1988 here at Memorial Stadium, and you you see the, the teams that they lost to in the year, and then the final ranking of those opponents, and it's just uh, mind-boggling to have six losses in that many years. And, but that's the tradition of the program here at Nebraska, and they're going to need that tradition and more to pull this one out. Clock is moving, as you can see, coming up on one minute, trailing by four, but they have the first down after the great run by Ross just moments ago. Daly looking to throw. He fires for the end zone. Broken up. A beautiful defensive play by Daryl Bennett. And boy, he's been in on a couple of big plays. And he comes up hobbling. Well, he got beat on that same route earlier for a touchdown. And give Bennett credit. He does not let the receiver get inside of him too far this time. He makes the break and gets underneath none and knocks the ball away. Boy, Terrence Nunn made that turn. The ball was coming right there. He thought maybe he had a shot for the go-ahead score. Now it's second down. That stopped the clock with 56 seconds to go. Incompleted pass. And again, we welcome more of you who are joining us for the final seconds of regulation here at Lincoln, Nebraska. And the Cornhuskers, under their new coach, Bill Callahan, find themselves down 21 to 17, but they're down here deep in Southern Miss territory. The ball is at the 13, the 12-yard line. 
but they're looking at a third down situation. Right, they're, they're in dire straits right here. Two more shots to take it into the end zone, and that's what I believe Bill Callahan will attempt to do, take these two chances to score rather than try and get a little bit now and a little bit on fourth down. I think he's going to go to the end zone. Could it be Matt Harrigan, the tight end, who was so spectacular in the season opening win last week and has had a touchdown catch earlier today? And a penalty marker comes down. He may have run out of time on the play clock. He did. Delay of game. Oh, that's big. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. That makes it much that much more difficult for Callahan and his offense. Well, today's Chevrolet players of the game for Nebraska. We've been talking about Corey Ross and all of his yardage. He's done quite a job. 27 carries, 169 yards. Defensively, a superb effort turned in by Southern Miss defender Daryl Bennett. Yeah, he's made a couple of fumble recoveries, and then we just saw him bat that pass away in the end zone two plays ago. Chevy makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. But right now, all eyes on Daly. He goes to the end zone. His man is there. Oh, Harry and couldn't hang on to it. They had a pretty good look. Caleb Hendricks was the defender. Yeah, and that ball just hung in the air too long because Harrion was open in the corner of the end zone, but Daly just hung it up. Look, he's going to have some room right here. He's open right now. The mm. ball's got to come in, and it just hung up too long, and that gave Hendricks the chance to come across and make a huge play. So here you are with 47 seconds to go. Ball game on the line for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska in front of nearly 80,000 frenzied fans. It is fourth down. They need to get to the two-yard line. Daly with time. Now elects to run. He's in trouble. And so are the Cornhuskers. He's out of bounds, but he didn't get the first down. And for possibly only the seventh time since 1988, Nebraska may be staring defeat right in the eye. They can't stop the clock. 37 seconds to go. About 2,000 Southern Miss fans who made the trek to Lincoln, Nebraska, they are absolutely elated, of course. How about this for a stunner? You got nobody in the three-point stance except for Barnett out here. And he's got the time. Daly's got the time, but the coverage downfield was outstanding. And now Daly's on the run. There's no one to throw to down there. So he's going to tuck it away and try and make it on his own. And he does not make it. Daly has attempted 42 passes today. That ties a Nebraska University record. But... They trail 21-17, and look at the jubilation here among the Golden Eagles. Callahan, your reaction as you would expect on the other side of the field. And now Southern Miss just playing out the final seconds of this one, and the countdown will begin. A season opener for the Golden Eagles. And this, uh, this thing's over because Southern Miss does not have to snap the football. The game clock is a couple of seconds ahead of the play clock, so all they have to do is stand there and congratulate each other. Well, the final seconds are winding down. There you see it, and now it is official. A two-touchdown underdog representing Conference USA has come into Lincoln, Nebraska, and done what only six other teams have done in the last 15-plus years. They've gotten themselves a road win, and there's the happy coach, Jeff Bauer, in his 14th season with Southern Miss, and his defense superb today, taking advantage of numerous mistakes by Nebraska, and it's reflected in our final score right there of 21 to 17. And how about Ullman? You see him, the quarterback who a year ago in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, was four for 24, and the worst day of his football life atones today. Vince? Well, Coach Bauer, what a way to open the season. Just the seventh team since 1988 to win here at Memorial Stadium by beating Nebraska. Well, it's a good win for us, and you know, we came over here in 99 and, uh, and, and lost the way they lost today we turned the ball over and today we took care of the football and our defense made turnovers for us and made big plays at crucial times and that was the big difference your team did not look like this was the season opener it didn't make the typical mistakes that a lot of teams make in the opener what do you credit that to well we had the one turnover but 
um, you know, the average fan doesn't know how many mistakes we made today. We made a lot of mistakes, and I don't think Dustin was particularly sharp throwing the football. Uh, we'll we'll get better the next ball game and do things better. I believe it's your first win on the road against a Big 12 team since Oklahoma State in 2000. Does this go down as one of the biggest wins in Southern Miss history? It was a good win, but I'll I tell you, we came into this ball game expecting to win this game. We really did. Um, you know, we played well here in 99 and lost two turnovers, went for touchdowns, and we get beat 17 to 14. Our players expected to win this game. Congratulations. Thank you. It's Jeff Bauer. <laughs> Gary. And a big challenge coming up for Bauer and his team Thursday night. They'll play host the Golden Bears, the University of California. For Vince Welch, for Ray Bentley, I'm Gary Gerald. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll check back in with our studios now where John, Craig, Aaron are standing by after this stunning surprise.